Dear members, please take your seats. Okay, good evening to all. This is our plenary session that's starting now. We need to move to our agenda because we have our debate with uh, our minister who is here. First note is the adoption of the document of the new 2025 term of office, strategic planning and remits of COR commissions. At the meeting on December 2019, members of the outgoing Bureau discussed the COR's strategic recommendations for the new term. These proposals were presented for approval at the first meeting of the new Bureau this morning, and the Bureau recommended that the Plenary Assembly adopt them. The new Commission's remits must provide COR members with the most effective political bodies to enable them to implement the resolution on the COR's political priorities for the new mandate to be adopted by the plenary session on March 2020, as well as the COR resolution on the new EC working programs. With regard to the responsibilities of the COR commissions for the new term of office, 2025, the Bureau proposes to maintain the six commissions that we had in our previous mandate, whilst providing an equitable political and workload balance and ensuring greater synergies for the Committee of the Regions, platforms and networks. I ask you now to approve this strategic planning and the remits of the COR commissions as set out in the document and its appendices, along with any amendments made by the Bureau. Please note that Luxembourg and Cyprus will have two seats in each Commission, and Estonia will have two seats in four Commissions and three seats in two Commissions. So, I would like for you to Adopt and accept McCarthy. this McCarthy. note. McCarthy. Thank you. McCarthy asking for ah, sorry. Where is it? Mr. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy. Where is he? Oh, okay. <laughs> Here in the front, Mr. President, um, I raise to support um, the strategic planning report. I think it's one of the most important documents that we'll probably agree upon uh, in the next five years. Um, it contains a strategic roadmap which well will help us to think, out about, think, think where we're going over the next five years. Um, and it is important um, that we limit as much as, the, um, as possible the siloization uh, within the organization um, and that commissions actually work more together. Um, I do reckon that there probably is a need for a, a kind of corporate policy group where the commission chairs meet every two to three months and discuss with yourself, President, of work actually ongoing um, within the commissions. Um, Mr. President, I'm also a big supporter of our communications unit and I think there's a larger role uh, for this unit to play um, going forward. Um, I'd also like to see the local dialogues revisited and re-established for the new mandate. Um, it has been the COR's influence um, which did lead the European Parliament and the European Commission um, to make more of a connection to the ground in the last two years um, and we can be very, very proud um, of such influence. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, do we agree on that? Okay. Now, I would like to communicate to communicate you two points. First of all, I would like to inform you that the COR interim president has decided to appoint Voiko Obersnell as Rapporteur General for the opinion on a proposal for a regulation of the European Parliament and of the Council establishing the just transition fund. The opinion will be tabled for the March 
plenary session. Secondly, I would like to inform you that, similarly, Mr. Dobroslavic was appointed as Rapporteur General for the Opinion on Local Democracy Challenges in the Western Balkans, which is a referral by the Croatian Presidency of the Council and which will be tabled for the March plenary session as well. Now, following the political, the political agreement between the six political groups yesterday, I understood that there is an agreement to create an ad hoc commission on the revision of the rules of procedure. Therefore, I propose to postpone this point to the March plenary, if you agree. Do we have any different opinions? Okay. So we postpone it. And now we are moving for the adoption of our first resolution for this mandate. It's the draft resolution on the 2020 annual sustainable growth strategy. Is there any general statement from the floor, or should we pass to the vote directly? We can pass to the vote directly. Amendment number one. Who is in favor? Who is against? It's adopted. Mm -hmm. Amendment number two. Who is in favor? Who is against? Adopted. Amendment number three. Who is in favor? Who is against? Adopted. Amendment number four. Who is in favor? Who is against? Adopted. Amendment number five. Who is in favor? Who is against? Adopted. Amendment number six. Who is in favor? Who is against? Adopted. Do you agree then to adopt? The whole of the resolution. Who is in favor? Who is against? Adopted. Abstentions? Do we have any abstentions? Adopted. Thank you. We will be moving now to the adoption of our first opinion for this mandate. It's strengthening the rule of law within the Union, a blueprint for action own initiative opinion. Mr. Rion, please take your seat here. In the absence of the rapporteur, Mr. Christophe Rion will present Mr. Lashop's opinion. Merci, Monsieur le, 
le président. J'étais tranquillement en train de boire un café, je n'ai pas vu leur tourner, je suis désolé. Alors, en tout cas, je, je, je tiens à, à vous remercier et puis aussi à, à féliciter euh, euh, et puis à remercier aussi euh, notre collègue Jacob, qui est d'ailleurs dans, dans la salle et que je, que je salue, qui euh, a élaboré ce, ce document et nous regrettons profondément, en tout cas à titre personnel, je regrette qu'il n'ait pas pu être de nouveau reconduit dans ses fonctions au sein du comité des régions parce que c'était un membre particulièrement actif et d'une très grande intelligence politique. Donc en, en son nom, je vais euh, euh, rapporter sur ce, sur ce dossier. Et je voudrais aussi remercier son expert, le professeur Spitalerelli, qui euh, ne peut pas, pour des raisons administratives un peu... Euh, je pense un petit peu exagéré, être présent ici euh, aujourd'hui. Donc l'élaboration de l'avis a été précédée par une consultation qui a permis euh, d'impliquer en particulier le président de la Cour de justice de l'Union européenne, le juge italien de la Cour européenne des droits de l'homme, les représentants de la Commission de Venise, mais également un service de la Commission, le secrétariat général du Conseil, certains membres du Parlement européen, comme par exemple Madame Hinteveld. Toutes et tous ont témoigné de leur grand intérêt à dialoguer avec le Comité européen des régions sur ce sujet. Nos contributions pourraient déboucher sur une participation concrète des autorités locales et régionales et de notre comité au débat et à la réalisation du renforcement de l'état de droit dans l'Union européenne. Cet avis insiste sur le principe d'égalité des États membres vis-à-vis -vis de l'Union et surtout sur la conviction que les principes de l'État de droit ne sont pas des limitations imposées aux États membres par l'Union européenne, mais, au contraire, ces principes de l'État de droit sont des valeurs communes, servant de socle commun au système constitutionnel de tous les États membres de l'Union européenne. C'est dans cet esprit que le texte apporte son soutien à la mise en place d'un système de monitorage ou de vérification, en français, pour tous les États membres. Son objectif est de défendre des valeurs communes et non de remettre en question le modèle institutionnel d'un État ou d'un autre. Par ailleurs, ce mécanisme de monitorage ne doit pas être compris comme interférant avec les procédures prévues par l'article 7 du traité sur l'Union européenne, dont personne, ni même la Commission, ne suggère la modification pour le moment. Le mécanisme de vérification de monitorage proposé, proposé vise à éviter des violations de l'état de droit grâce à un système de dialogue préventif. Ce système de monitorage est complémentaire à la compétence de la Commission pour engager des procédures d'infraction à l'encontre des États membres qui ne respectent pas les, les obligations inscrites dans les traités. Par exemple, les atteintes à l'indépendance du système judiciaire constitue un grave manquement au traité dans la mesure où elles remettent en cause la base de confiance mutuelle entre les États de l'Union européenne sur laquelle repose l'intégration européenne. L'avis souligne aussi les menaces qui peuvent peser sur la liberté de la presse dans le contexte de l'économie numérique. Afin de parer à ces menaces, il faut un soutien accru à la presse indépendante notamment au niveau local. En vue d'une application plus importante des collectivités locales et régionales et du comité des régions dans le renforcement de l'état de droit, l'avis formule certaines propositions concrètes telles que la proposition de réunions décentralisées visant à promouvoir la culture de l'état de droit, que ces réunions précèdent l'événement annuel proposé par la Commission, et elle propose aussi l'implication des ordres d'avocats, de médiateurs, de centres de recherche et de la société civile organisés dans ce système de monitorage. En ce qui concerne les amendements, nous avons essayé de prendre en, considéra en considération toutes les propositions qui sont en phase avec l'esprit du projet commun de renforcer la protection de l'État de droit. L'État de droit n'est pas seulement un atout de l'Union européenne, mais c'est une condition essentielle de son fonctionnement. On ne peut pas par conséquent accepter les amendements qui visent à affaiblir un nouveau mécanisme de monitorage et qui prétendent que les États membres, de par leurs différences culturelles, sont incapables d'avoir des standards communs en termes d'état de droit. En conclusion, permettez-moi de souligner que l'adoption de cet avis constitue un point de départ. La participation accrue des collectivités locales et régionales du Comité européen des régions à la promotion de l'état de droit passe par un dialogue permanent avec les autres institutions de l'Union européenne. 
Les relations avec les organes du Conseil de l'Europe qui travaillent depuis longtemps sur les sujets de l'état de droit, notamment le Congrès des pouvoirs locaux et la Commission de, de Venise, devraient être maintenues et renforcées. L'adoption de l'avis marque l'engagement du Comité européen des régions à développer ce dialogue et à coordonner les efforts des autorités locales et régionales sur cette question sensible mais essentielle. Je vous remercie de votre attention et je vous remercie par avance de vos observations. So the floor is now open. Does anyone want to take uh, the floor? Okay. So, ah, okay. Uh, dear colleague, I can see the name. Dzień dobry. Chciałbym kilka słów powiedzieć, jeżeli podnoszony jest temat praworządności, to dosyć nas to dotyka jako obywateli Rzeczypospolitej Polskiej. Z tego powodu, że wskazuje się właśnie między innymi nasz kraj, że jakieś działania władz polskich naruszają praworządność. Osobiście uważam, że nic takiego nie ma miejsca. Natomiast chciałem przy okazji tej opinii zwrócić uwagę na, na taką, myślę, główną zasadą, która szczególnie Komitet Regionów powinna cechować. My patrzymy na Unię Europejską, na wszystkie kraje Europy, zwracając uwagę na jej różnorodność wynikającą z wspaniałej historii, z odrębnych, bardzo ciekawych realizacji europejskiej kultury w różnych miejscach naszego kontynentu. I tak jak mówimy, no, nasze bogactwo całej Europy i kultury europejskiej jest właśnie wzięte z tej różnorodności. Stąd takie spojrzenie na poszczególne kraje, większe, mniejsze, w taki sposób unifikujący jest, wydaje mi się, dosyć niebezpieczne. Zarówno dla zachowania tej tradycji, tej, tego bogactwa, jak i ma takie niezbyt dobre, myślę, konsekwencje praktyczne. Stąd też chciałbym Państwu przedłożyć pod rozwagę wszystkie argumenty, które zgłaszaliśmy jako Grupa Europejskich Konserwatystów i Reformatorów, aby, aby jednak bardzo ostrożnie tutaj podchodzić do tych zamiarów unifikacji i oceny poszczególnych rozwiązań ustrojowych w krajach członkowskich Unii Europejskiej. No, wystarczy powiedzieć, że mamy, mamy zorganizowane państwa w Europie, tak jak tutaj w Belgii, wokół osoby panującej, mamy republiki, mamy duże państwa, małe, no i trudno jeden standard zastosować i oceniać, który, który z tych ustrojów jest lepszy i bardziej właściwy. Podobnie jeżeli chodzi o organizację sądownictwa, mamy bardzo różne tradycje tworzenia tego systemu, uwarunkowania historyczne, które z nich wynikają. Stąd też takie kategoryczne rozstrzygnięcia z poziomu europejskiego odnoszące się do poszczególnych rozwiązań przyjmowanych w poszczególnych krajach wydaje mi się bardzo niebezpieczne i bardzo ingerujące w to bogactwo właśnie tej różnorodności, którą mamy w Europie. Dlatego zachęcam, żeby, żebyśmy pochylili się nad tymi uwagami. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Dziękuję, już kończę. I w tych sprawach i w innych prosiłbym, żebyśmy jednak szanowali różnorodność i odmienność poszczególnych tradycji, poszczególnych krajów. Dziękuję. Thank you, dear colleague. Let's move now to the votes on amendments. Oui, uh, Monsieur Rouillon. Je souhaiterais répondre à, à notre collègue. Je ne pense pas que notre collègue faisait la promotion du non-respect de l'état de droit. Je voudrais dire quand même que parmi les conditions qui existent pour l'entrée dans l'Union européenne, il y a le respect de l'état de droit. Donc on ne peut pas, une fois que l'on est rentré dans l'Union européenne, dans les institutions européennes, dire que non, les règles qu'on a, qu a, qu a engagées à respecter, on ne les respecte pas. Et je ne crois pas que 
Il s'agit de différences culturelles. Bien entendu, on peut chacun avoir sa culture. Dans la Sarthe, il y a des particularismes culturels qui n'existent certainement pas dans votre région. En revanche, les standards communs, euh, de ceux du respect de la personne, la liberté de la presse, l'indépendant de la justice, sont des principes qui ne sont pas du domaine culturel. Ce sont des principes juridiques qui sont d'ailleurs, euh, qui doivent être respectés par une cour de justice indépendante qui, a, qui applique les mêmes, euh, les mêmes standards. Donc on ne peut pas du tout euh, exciper des différences culturelles pour s'exonérer des, des règles de l'état de droit. Je pense qu'on n'est pas du tout dans le, dans le même domaine. Et je voudrais dire par rapport à, à la remarque, euh, je suis un peu juriste, euh, mais on ne peut pas expliquer qu'il y a euh, des monarchies et des républiques. Certes, il y a des monarchies et des républiques, mais à mon sens, ce sont des monarchies constitutionnelles. Et on n'a pas, on pas euh, en Europe de système monarchique tel qu'on pouvait l'entendre avant 1789 en France. Donc voilà, donc nous avons des systèmes politiques qui sont démocratiques dans l'ensemble de l'Union Européenne, qui s'appuient sur l'état de droit. Et à mon sens, euh, il faut respecter ces règles parce que c'est notre patrimoine commun. Et je répète, c'était encore parmi les conditions d'entrer dans l'Union Européenne. Merci beaucoup. Alors maintenant, uh, now let's, uh, uh, Mr. Speich, ask for the floor, please. Ich würde die Ausführungen des Berichterstatters sehr gerne unterstützen und mit einem einfachen Hinweis ergänzen. Ich zitiere aus dem Anhang der Verträge von Lissabon. Die Verträge und das von der Union auf Grundlage der Verträge gesetzte Recht haben Vorrang vor dem Recht der Mitgliedstaaten. Dieser eherne Grundsatz des Vorrangs von europäischem Recht wird durch den Verweis auf kulturelle Traditionen verwässert und relativiert. Das ist der Beginn von Willkür und deswegen würde ich das an dieser Stelle sehr deutlich zurückweisen wollen. Okay, Miss Dulkevich, please. Bardzo dziękuję Panie Przewodniczący. Jestem drugi dzień w Komitecie Regionów. Pochodzę z Gdańska, miasta Solidarności i Wolności. I bardzo chciałam podziękować Komitetowi Regionów i Komisji CIVEX, do której też się zapisałam, że podjęła ten temat. Dla wielu Polaków dzisiaj temat praworządności, podstawowych zasad przestrzegania prawa, niezawisłości i niezależności sędziowskiej jest wielkim zmartwieniem i troską. Dziękuję bardzo, że jesteśmy we wspólnocie europejskiej, która także tym, którzy nie zawsze przestrzegają prawa, wskazuje właściwą drogę. Dla nas samorządowców, przedstawicieli miast i regionów, jasność prawa, pewność tego, że sądy będą działały jako sądy niezawisłe jest podstawowym elementem sprawnego działania każdego demokratycznego państwa. W tym roku w Polsce w maju, 27 maja będziemy obchodzili 30. rocznicę pierwszych wyborów do samorządów lokalnych. Jest to dla nas szalenie ważna data, bo samorządy lokalne w Polsce są dzisiaj odbierane jako największy sukces sukces ostatniego trzydziestolecia. Dlatego wskazywanie podstawowych zasad, którymi kieruje się Unia Europejska, której jesteśmy członkami od 16 lat, jest dla nas szalenie ważne. Dziękuję. Mr. Godek, it's not uh, foreseen for a uh, second uh, time speaking on for the same subject. So, yeah, but it's not foreseen on the rules of procedure. Please, Mr. Rotel. Dziękuję bardzo, panie przewodniczący. Chcę też oświadczyć, że żyjemy w kraju demokratycznym. Rzeczywiście będziemy obchodzili ważne daty związane z rocznicami powołania samorządu, który rzeczywiście sprawdził się, broni się. Cieszymy się bardzo, że możemy tu też być z państwem w tej reprezentacji Europejskiego Komitetu Regionów. Myślę, że ten demokratyczny rząd, który został wybrany w demokratycznych wyborach, nikt tego nie kwestionuje. Dokonuje zmian, które są konieczne dla prawidłowego funkcjonowania 
i tej demokracji, i naszego prawa w naszym kraju. Są liczne przykłady, są liczne, liczne, liczne przypadki, które potwierdzają fakt, że należy sądownictwo w Polsce zreformować i myślę, że ta reforma będzie korzystna dla oczywiście obywateli, bo oni też bezpośrednio cierpią, ale i także dla przedsiębiorców, bo oni doznają wiele krzywd po prostu na w trakcie funkcjonowania i prowadzenia działalności gospodarczej. Wiele reform zostało dokonanych. Myślę, że i ta też jest konieczna i będzie naprawdę wyprowadzała nasz kraj i wprowadzała na, do krajów o sprawnie i demokratycznie funkcjonującym systemie, a także systemie prawnym. Thank you very much. Mr. Wozniak, please. Dziękuję panie przewodniczący. Koledzy reprezentujący Polskę w ramach EKR niestety prowokują do zabrania głosu, ponieważ prezentują tutaj linię naszego rządu, która niestety tłumaczy te wszystkie działania, które są podejmowane wobec sądownictwa, a w naszej ocenie one wymykają się spod europejskich zasad i prowadzą jednak prostą drogą do naruszenia demokracji i do stworzenia systemu docelowo autorytarnego mniej czy bardziej. Więc proszę wziąć pod uwagę, że ten polski głos płynie ze strony zbliżonej do rządu. Nie wszyscy tutaj jesteśmy tego samego zdania. Wielu z nas tutaj reprezentujących Polskę, inne ugrupowania jest zdecydowanie krytyczne wobec tych działań i trudno je ładnymi słowami tłumaczyć. Nie da się po prostu pewnych rzeczy wytłumaczyć. Dziękuję bardzo. OK. So this was the last intervention. We're now moving to the votes on amendments, but before that, the rapporteur would like to say something. Mr. Rouillon. Non, je ne voulais pas donner l'impression que nous ne faisions le procès d'un pays ou d'un autre, ou d'une région ou d'une autre. C'est un, un avis qui concerne l'ensemble des euh, pays de l'Union européenne. C'est une vision transversale et il n'est pas du tout question de cibler tel ou tel pays dans cet avis. Alors, euh, let's move on to the uh, votes on the amendments. We have amendment number one. Uh, who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? Rejected. Rejected. Amendment two. Who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? Rejected. Rejected. Amendment three. We have an oral compromise. It's on the screen. So who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? It passes. Amendment number four. Who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? Rejected. Amendment number five. Who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? Adopted. Amendment number six. Who is in favor? Who is against? Vote electronic. Vote electronic. Thank you. 
The vote is closed. It's rejected. Amendment number seven. Who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? Approved. Amendment number eight. Who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? Rejected. Amendment number nine. Who is in favor? Who is against? Vote electronic. The vote is closed. It passes. Okay. Amendment number 10. Who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? Rejected. Amendment number 11. Who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions rejected. Amendment number 12, who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions rejected. Amendment 13, favor? Who is against? Electronic vote, please. The vote is closed, approved. <laughs> Amendment 14, who's in favor? Who is against? Abstentions rejected. Amendment 15, who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions rejected. Final vote, please. Who is in favor? Who is against? Abstentions? It's adopted. Congratulations. I now invite the Minister, Ivan Malenica, Minister of Public Administration of Croatia, to have a debate with our members. The way it's going to go, we will have a statement, a brief statement from me, a statement from the Minister, and then we will have representatives of the political groups, the first vice president, and interventions from the floor, from all our members. Hello, Minister. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. Dear Minister Malenica, it is a pleasure to welcome you to our plenary session. The Croatian EU presidency comes at a time when critically important decisions directly affect the future and the shape of our Union. Agreements on the next multi-financial framework, Green Deal, our ongoing response to migration, as well as our future relations with the United Kingdom and the Western Balkans, will have a profound impact on all of us. We therefore welcome uh, your request for two opinion, opinions by our committee on the demographic challenges and on local democracy in the Western Balkans. Let me also stress that a strong and modern cohesion policy is needed today more than ever before 
to tackle disparities, support the digital and climate transitions, as well as support the integration of migrants. Depriving regions and cities of EU funds is a threat to a balanced and sustainable development. We will stress this again during the high-level conference that will, take, that will take place, a conference of ministers responsible for cohesion policy in Zagreb on the 30th of March. Regional and local authorities are also ready to contribute to the success of the summit on the Western Balkans in Zagreb in May. Like you, I live in a border region with the Western Balkans. Only a European perspective of this region can offer stability, economic growth, and ultimately a better future for its citizens. In March, in March our institution will adopt its contribution towards the Zagreb summit, and I call on your presidency to invite our institution to present its recommendations during this very important summit. Finally, we will continue contributing to the exercise of rebuilding trust of the European Union, in particular in the context of the Conference of the Future of Europe. We will do so by building on active subsidiarity and local democracy and multiplying our efforts to build a union which acts closer to citizens, and we will insist here. I hope we can do that starting in Rijeka in April, where we will hold our external bureau meeting, and in May in Zagreb, when we will organize a seminar focusing on the sustainable development goals. We therefore count on your support, Minister, to raise the importance of actively involving the cities and the regions in the Conference for the Future of Europe within the European Council. This, as we discussed earlier together in our bilateral meeting, is the only way to move forward. If Europe wants to have a future, it needs to have democracy. And if it needs to have democracy, then it's certain that there is a major role for the cities and the regions to play. So you have the floor. I welcome you again to the COR, and I'm really positive and optimistic that you will be of great help to the one million elected regional and local politicians who are asking to play a major role in forming Europe's future. Thank you very much. Minister. Thank you. Dear President of the Committee of Regions, dear members, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you, President Tsitsikostas, for inviting me today to present the priorities of Croatian Presidency of the Council in my capacity as Minister of Public Administration of Croatia. It's an honor for me and a pleasure to be with you on this special day during this important moment for all of you, the first day of your new term of office for the period of the 2020 to the 2025. Let me congratulate you on your constituent plenary and wish you a fruitful mandate in the interest of European citizens. My sincere congratulations also go out of, to you, President Siti Costas and Vice President Cordeiro, for your election, as well as to Bureau members. Let me also commend President Lambert and Vice President Marquola on their successful mandate, during which several outstanding initiatives took place. I would mention the Reflecting on Europe process with over 200 citizen debates and local events organized in the member states, as well as the President's address on the State of the Union from the perspective of regions and cities, which was delivered for the first time in 2017. The Committee of Region is a respected European body and an important link of local and regional levels. 
The Committee's opinions are an integral part of the EU legislative process. The Committee's action is particularly important for retaining citizens' trust. Your work, dear members, helps to keep European decision-making rooted in reality. For instance, your action with regard to citizens' dialogues contributed substantially to bringing Europe closer to citizens. I agree with your analysis that some of the main challenges facing Europe social justice, regional inequalities, migration, sustainability, climate, and increasing the engagement of the citizen in the EU need to be addressed using a multi-level approach. Addressing these challenges is impossible with the local and regional authorities. The Croatian Presidency counts on your support and participation. I believe in the mission of your institution. We as Presidency, are ready to cooperate closely with you during, during this semester. The Republic of Croatia is presiding from, for the first time over, ever over the Council of the EU, from the 1st of January to the 30th of June 2020. A remarkable moment for us, since our country is the youngest member state of the EU. Croatia will focus on a motto, a strong Europe in a world of challenges, and on positioning Europe as a global leader. More Europe and a strong European voice are needed in order to tackle the challenges. This can only be achieved if we are together and work for the benefit of all member states, its regions and citizens. The su success of the European project also depends on the vitality of our cities and regions, and this is also reflected in the Committee's work. The program of Croatian Presidency consists of four priority areas, a Europe that develops, a Europe that connects, a Europe that protects, and an influential Europe. When it comes to our first priority, a Europe that develops, it should be recalled that the European Union, its economy and labour market face new global challenges and demographic changes. In order for the EU to stay competitive, the Croatian Presidency will continue deepening the single market, encouraging the digitalisation agenda, investment in research and innovation, as well as lifelong learning. Developing new skills adjusted to, to jobs of the future is also essential. Our main objective is to ensure a balanced, sustainable and inclusive growth of the Union that takes into account the specificities of all member states and their regions. The cohesion policy is a crucial for reducing economic, social and territorial differences and for strengthening the competitiveness of the EU and all its regions. Cohesion contributes to the creation of new jobs, investment and economic growth and to the smooth and efficient functioning of the single market. At the same time, it directly affects the quality of life of EU citizens and helps them face new challenges, such as demographic changes, industrial transition and climate change. I'm aware that the cohesion policy is dear to your heart, and your committee is also actively working on it. You're a strong defender of its development, often expressing the concerns of the regions and cities regarding its funding. Let me assure you that the Croatian Presidency will contribute to finalizing the negotiations on the legislative package for the cohesion policy 2021-2027. Rules enabling effective implementation of projects will play an important role in further implementation of the cohesion policy. The timely agreement on the next multi-annual financial framework for the next seven years is our priority. Together with the President of the European Council, Mr. Charles Michel, who is continuing the MFF talks at the highest political level, 
We will work together that the next MFF should meet the expectation of all our citizens in all our member states and creates added, added value at the same time talking into consideration the principle of sound financial management. In particular, it must continue to finance cohesion and agricultural policies, but also be able to address many new challenges the EU is facing. Croatia will pay special attention to promoting the initiatives that encourage reform process and con convergence among member states. The Presidency will continue to implement initiatives that support deepening of the single market and it will invest additional efforts in strengthening the EU's international economic and financial role. In that respect, emphasis will be placed on strengthening the international role of the euro. Inclusion of citizens, dialogues with the civil, civil society, organizations and transparency of the institution of the European Union are crucial components in strengthening its democracy legitimacy. It's an important investment in strengthening citizens' trust in the Union and in shaping the policies focused on the improvement of their quality of life. All of this is important for fighting growing populism in many EU member states. The Presidency will promote efficient, re responsible and digitalized European public administration that will be able to provide a timely and, uh, and high quality response to the challenges the Union is facing while consistently applying principles of excellence, balanced geographical representation and equality between women and men. We will be committed to moving forward with the main initiatives contained in the European Green Deal, bearing in mind its importance as one of the main building blocks of the new Commission and need for a clear political signal related to EU transition to climate neutrality until 2050. The new Commission also recognized the need to address the demographic challenges. Today, the EU is facing problems of the aging population and the loss of young and educated workers to more developed states. To prevent this we should, work, we should all work together and look for a solution to support the member states and its regions. The Presidency will be dedicated to building a close future relationship between the European Union and the United Kingdom, based on partnership in the areas of common interest, in line with the political declaration, setting out the framework for the future relationship between the EU and the UK, and by following the European Council guidelines as well as other statements and declarations. Under the second priority, a Europe that connects, we will promote initiatives contributing to digital connectivity, transport and energy for the benefit of our citizens. As you know, connectivity is one of the most important prerequisites for achieving social, economic and territorial cohesion among member states and regions. During our presidency, we will place a strong emphasis on bringing citizens together through education, culture and sport. Only safe Europe can provide peaceful environment for its citizens under the third priority. A Europe that protects. We will work on the Union's new strategic guidelines in the areas of freedom, security and justice based on shared values, democracy and rule of law. The Croatian Presidency has recognized the importance of promoting a comprehensive approach to the rule of law. The aim is to strengthen and protect the fundamental values of the Union. The rule of law is embedded in the founding and functioning the Union as a community of values in which democracy, human rights and the rule of law are respected and protected. This is a shared responsibility for the, of the Union and the Member States individually. Efficient protection of the EU's external borders 
as well as an increased resilience to external threats and hybrid and cyber threats are of vital importance. Achieving a comprehensive solution for a sustainable and effective migration and asylum policies is our joint objective. Under the fourth priority, an influential Europe, we will highlight the Union's role on a global scale and in its neighbourhood. We will focus on development of overall political and so social resilience in the partners' countries as, long at, as a long-term answer to preventing crises caused by human or natural factors. The Presidency will continue to encourage stronger connection, connections between short-term humanitarian aid and long-term international development cooperation. Croatia will focus on further reducing inequality through the implementation of economic measures for encouraging investment and creating sustainable jobs, in particular through strengthening cooperation with the middle-income countries and less developed countries. To achieve more efficient results, special attention will be paid to youth and to women and girls as a key drivers of sustainable development. We will continue to support credible and merit-based EU enlargement policy. Dear President, dear members, the Croatian Presidency will be pleased to cooperate with you during this semester. We believe that European local and regional actors can contribute to promoting a more competitive, connected and secure Europe. In that regard, we have identified several areas where we would appreciate the input of the European Committee of the Regions, notably working together with you on implementing the European Green Deal promoting digitalization at regional and local level, promoting macro-regional strategies, tackling brain drain and demographic challenges in the EU, enlargement package, contribution to the, to the development of middle-income countries, strengthening the rule of law within the Union, we must get closer to our citizens, listen and provide appropriate answer answers to their concerns. As a part of the efforts to bring the Union closer to its citizens, Croatia will also engage in the Conference of, on the Future of Europe jointly with other institutions and member states. The conference should be inclusive in nature and foresee a broad consultation of citizens in the course of the process. We should build on successful holding of the citizens' dialogues over the past two years. I am aware that you had already called for a follow-up to the citizens' consultations exercise in the form of a permanent EU mechanism for structured consultations and dialogues with the citizens. Work on defining a council position is in, in progress on the basis of indications from the European Council meeting in December 2019. The Committee of the Regions expertise at local level and its experience in the organization of citizen dialogues will make a valuable contribution to these initiatives. I would be happy to have your input and hear your views including on how you see the specific role of the Committee of the Regions in the conference. We are looking forward to cooperating with you in achieving the EU's future objective. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Minister. Let's uh, open the floor to discussions. We, the floor goes to uh, Mr. Dobroslavic, Kola. Zahvaljujem predsjedniče, poštovani ministre Malenica. U ime 
kluba Evropske pučke stranke. Pozdravljam angažiranost Hrvatskog predsjedništva Vijećem Evropske unije i posebno čestitam Hrvatskom predsjedništvu na programu i izboru prioriteta toga programa za ovih šest mjeseci predsjedanja Vijećem Evropske unije. Odabrani moto Snažna Evropa u svijetu punom izazova doista pogađa politički trenutak i svaki drugi trenutak, ali ide u korak s nastojanjima Evropske unije za budućnost. Za nas u odboru regija Snažna Evropa svakako znači snažne regije, gradovi i općine Evropske unije. I u tome vidimo sinergiju s nastojanjima Hrvatskog presjedanja vijećem i naše misije koje imamo u odboru regija, a to je daljni razvoj lokalne i regionalne samouprave. Prioritet Evropa koja se razvija potvrđuje da se ne samo moramo razvijati, nego osigurati konkurentnost Evropske unije na zahtjevnom otvorenom svjetskom tržištu. Unutar toga vrlo važnim smatramo brzo usvajanje višegodišnjeg financijskog okvira, dakle sedmogodišnjeg proračuna, ali proračuna u kojem neće doći do smanjivanja kohezijske politike, do smanjivanja zajedničke poljoprivredne politike, jer smo izistirali jednako kao Evropski parlament da oni ostanu na barem sadašnjoj razini. I zbog toga smo, kao i Evropski parlament, predlagali da izdvajanje za proračun Evropske unije bude na razini 1,3% bruto nacionalnog prihoda EU-27. Evropa koja povezuje također je važan prioritet, jer smatramo da je povezanost preduvjet socijalne, ekonomske i teritorijalne kohezije koja nam je svima važna posebno na regionalnoj i lokalnoj razini. U tome da kako očekujemo kvalitetnu TNT mrežu i instrument za povezivanje Evrope u kojem neće biti manje sredstava nego što je to bilo do sada. Evropa koja štiti također govori o tome da idemo u korak s vremenom, obrana zaštita vanjskih granica, rješavanje nezakonitih migracija su izazovi na koje moramo zajednički dati odgovor. I četvrti prioritet utjecaja na Evropa u kojem je dobro da je Hrvatsko predsjedništvo pozornost usmjerilo ka proširenju Europske unije na Zapadni Balkan. Nije dobro da je Vijeće blokiralo otvaranje pregovora sa Sjevernom Makedonijom i s Albanijom zbog toga što je to bilo njima obećano. No da kako mi smo na stajalištu da sve te zemlje moraju ispuniti kriterije za ulazak u Europsku uniju, ali da je dobro za njih i da je dobro za Europsku uniju da one budu članice ove unije. Očekujemo i nadalje jednak je angažman Hrvatskog predsjedništva. Nadamo se što skorijem usvajanju višegodišnjeg financijskog okvira i da kako uspjehu konferencije u Zagrebu u Svimnju. Veselimo se dobroj suradnji odbora regija i Hrvatskog predsjedništva. Hvala. Thank you very much on behalf of the EPP. Now let's move uh, to the PS and uh, the floor is for Mr. Rodriguez. Ah, Mrs. Rodriguez, I'm sorry. Gracias, estimados miembros del Comité Ministro. Quiero aprovechar este espacio para reconocer el esfuerzo que debe suponer presidir por primera vez la Unión Europea. Sin duda no debe ser una tarea fácil, pero le doy mi sincera enhorabuena. Su lema Una Europa fuerte en un mundo lleno de desafíos es perfecto para el momento dinámico, cambiante y radicalizado en ocasiones en el que vivimos ahora. 
Le agradezco enormemente su presentación, una exposición con prioridades claras, con una convergencia entre ellas y con lo que los miembros del Comité de las Regiones defendemos. Al hilo de esto quería destacar dos puntos. El primero tiene que ver con el futuro marco financiero plurianual. El Comité, junto con el Parlamento Europeo, defiende un presupuesto que representa el 1,3% de la renta nacional bruta de la Unión Europea de los 27. Los recientes eurobarómetros y las elecciones europeas muestran que los europeos quieren cada vez más Europa. Una Europa más ecológica, más innovadora, más unida, más coordinada, más colaborativa. Sin embargo, es difícil hacerlo bien con un presupuesto menor. Entendemos las circunstancias presentes, los cambios estructurales de la Unión que obligan a ser más cuidadosos con los recursos. Pero, ministro, le pido, por favor, que dialogue con sus colegas y les convenza, sobre todo a los que son más reacios en el Consejo, les convenza de que inviertan más en nuestro futuro común para que se definan unos aportes de acuerdo al proyecto de una forma proporcional, equitativa y justa. El segundo punto sería la política de cohesión. La política de cohesión no es una política pasada de moda. Tenemos que ponerla de moda para que reduzca las disparidades regionales en Europa y lleve los beneficios de la construcción europea a todos los ciudadanos, sin imponer, sin importar el lugar donde viven. La política de cohesión es la principal política europea para combatir el cambio climático, para gestionar la migración o financiar la investigación y la innovación, entre otras grandes cuestiones. Y además es el método correcto para lograr los objetivos que la Unión Europea se ha fijado, ya que involucra a todos los niveles de gobierno. Es en definitiva la política que concilia los objetivos principales de la Unión Europea con las expectativas de los ciudadanos. Pero sería injusto centrarnos solo en la política de cohesión o el marco financiero. Para mí ha sido una gran satisfacción conocer, entre otras prioridades, también la promoción de la igualdad entre hombres y mujeres. Así lo hacemos también en mi región, en La Rioja, donde hemos incluido esto en el plan de gobierno. Y comparto con usted la preocupación por la realidad demográfica actual y la necesidad de establecer medidas para frenar las tendencias demográficas negativas. Ministro, empezaba mi intervención reconociéndole que dirigir Europa debe ser una tarea compleja, pero para nuestra suerte somos millones de personas persiguiendo y trabajando por un objetivo común, la prosperidad y el bien común. Usted puede contar con las regiones para llevar adelante su plan. Nosotros contamos con usted para defender estas ideas dentro del Consejo de la Unión Europea y que quede plasmado en el presupuesto, porque entre todos podemos conseguir una Europa más fuerte, sin importar los desafíos que se nos presenten. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, dear colleague. Now we will move to the Renew Europe representative, Carla Fall Langergren. Thank you. On Renew Europe's vegnar, welcome to the Croatian Ordfinders Cup's priorities. We can see that you understand what are the most important challenges, and we feel very well to them themselves. Under detta ordförandeskap har kommissionen lagt fram många av de viktigaste initiativen för de närmaste åren. Och låt mig försäkra er om att vi kommer ha starka och detaljerade ståndpunkter från både städerna och regionerna. För det första vill vi ha en omfattande och ambitiös fond för en rättvis omställning som inte bara bygger på den befintliga sammanhållningsanslagen. Vår främsta uppdrag är att minska koldioxidutsläppen. Vi måste göra det på ett sätt som både är rättvist och inkluderande och leder till en mer sammanhållen och konkurrenskraftig europeisk ekonomi. En rättvis omställning avser dock inte bara kolregionerna 
Omvälvningarna i våra ekonomier kommer att vara bredare. Det kommer att påverka transporterna, produktionen av varor, tillhandahållandet av tjänster. En rättvis omställning bör omfatta alla europeiska regioner. För det andra ser vi industristrategin som en av de viktigaste inslaget i omställningen till en koldioxidneutral ekonomi. Vi förespråkar starkt en platsbaserad strategi. En strategi där EU fungerar som en drivkraft. En strategi där EU ser vilka regioner och städer som utmärker sig och hjälper dem att koppla samman dessa ekosystem med andra och få dem att växa. Vi vill ha en industristrategi som bygger på geografiska fördelar och förser vår ekonomi med ett utbrett nätverk av sunda och innovativa tillväxtcentrum som arbetar med och inte mot varandra. Omvälvningarna sker överallt oavsett om vi talar om den traditionella bilsektorn eller om turismen och vi behöver ett lyhörd strategi som fungerar väl nerifrån och upp. Jag avslutar därför med en fråga till dig. Instämmer det kroatiska ordförandeskapet i detta synsätt och hur kommer de att bidra till utformningen av EUs industristrategi så att den inte blir ett uppifrån och nedriktad strategi som bara kommer att fungera på pappret? Tack! Thank you. We now move to the ECR, Mr. Ortil. Panie przewodniczący, szanowny panie ministrze, pragnę przywitać pana w imieniu grupy europejskich konserwatystów i reformatorów na dzisiejszej sesji plenarnej, jakże podziękować także za obecność. Nasza grupa pragnie, by Unia Europejska, a także prezydencja Chorwacji koncentrowała się na obszarach, które przynoszą obywatelom wyraźne korzyści. Nasi członkowie uważają, że przy każdej, każdej decyzji podjętej przez Unię Europejską powinno być rozeznanie, czy decyzja ta niesie w sobie wartość dodaną, wartość dodaną w życie każdego obywatela i także w, w naszą gospodarkę. Hasłem naszej grupy politycznej której przewodniczę jest skupienie się na obszarach o wartości dodanej. Pamiętajmy, że będziemy mieli mniejszy budżet. Wymienię trzy takie obszary. To spójność, badania naukowe i transformacja energetyki. Najlepszym przykładem unijnej wartości dodanej jest polityka spójności. Środki na politykę spójności mają zasadnicze znaczenie dla wielu krajów, które odbudowują swoją gospodarkę po komunizmie. Nie są to oczywiście cele dobroczynne. Badania pokazują, że środki te wnoszą wartość dodaną do gospodarki we wszystkich krajach europejskich. Każde euro zainwestowane w politykę spójności w latach 2007-2013 w całej Unii Europejskiej wygenerowało niemal 2,75 euro PKB. Takie kraje jak Austria, Niemcy, Niderlandia czy Belgia odniosły zaskakujące duże korzyści. One oczywiście też. Nalegam na Pana, by prezydencja zapewniła jasne ukazanie każdemu, powtórzę, każdemu korzyści płynących z polityki spójności podczas negocjacji w sprawie letnich ram finansowych. Liczę również na wsparcie Pana prezydencji w zakresie respektowania suwerenności rządów krajowych. Nasza grupa uważa, że środki na politykę spójności nie mogą być wykorzystywane do karania krajów za odmienne podejście do takich kwestii jak migracja. Pamiętajmy, że ważną sprawą jest agenda na rzecz cyfryzacji. Pan wyraźnie pokazał ten nacisk w pańskiej prezydencji, ale ważnym też jest transformacja energetyczna. My też to doceniamy i też w tym kierunku idziemy. Musimy pamiętać o tym, aby ona była sprawiedliwa, ona była z realistycznymi celami. Musimy wspólnie pracować nad tymi kwestiami w celu zbudowania silniejszej przyszłości służącej Europie i naszym obywatelom. So we move to the Greens with Ms. Harpanen.
Mr. President, Honorable Minister, um, cet hiver était spécial, peut-être le plus curieux de ma vie. Ma ville est située au bord de la mer et d'une grande rivière, et normalement, elles sont couvertes par la glace, mais pas cette année. When I was a child, it was usual that the temperature was below minus 20 for months and sometimes even below 40, minus 40. We built snow castles and snowmen skied and skated all over Finland, even drove a car on the ice. But this winter, we have had to cancel skating events, even in the north, and children have missed their skiing lessons at school because of lack of snow. The farmers, on their part, are afraid of losing their crops because there's no necessary frost on the soil to make the soil granulous and thus good and fertile for farming. There's also a threat that harmful pests won't die when the weather is so mild. I'll continue in Finnish now. Vaikka kerron nyt esimerkkejä omasta pohjoisesta kotikaupungistani, näkyy ilmastonmuutos jo kaikkialla. Ellei me pysty rajoittamaan nopeasti ilmaston lämpenemistä, joudumme luopumaan monista meille itsestään selvistä mukavuuksista, kuten pohjoismaalaisille kalastamisesta järven jäällä. Vihreä ryhmä onnittelee Kroatiaa puheenjohtajakaudesta ja toivottaa sille menestystä päätavoitteisiinsa pääsemisessä. Kaikkia näitä tavoitteita kohti mentäessä on huolehdittava siitä, että vihreämmän Euroopan sopimus Green Deal kulkee mukana ja Kroatia kannustaa muita Euroopan unionin maita jatkamaan päästövähennysten rohkeaa tietä. Euroopan unionin on oltava nykyistäkin kunnianhimoisempi ilmastotavoitteissaan ja asetettava tavoitteeksi ilmaston lämpenemisen pysäyttäminen yhteen ja puoleen asteeseen ja päästöjen vähentäminen 65 prosentilla vuoteen 2030 mennessä. Ilmastonmuutoksen pysäyttäminen mahdollisimman nopeasti turvaa eurooppalaisen kestävän elämän laadun jatkumisen turvaa sen, että lapsemme pääsevät hiihtämään tulevaisuudessakin ja sen, että maanviljelijä voi luottaa vuoden aikojen tuttuun kiertoon. Vielä kerran, arvoisa ministeri, onnea ja menestystä puheenjohtajakauteen. Thank you very much. Uh, we move to the EA, and uh, I would like for, to ask for Ms. Maupetius to take the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Ministre, pour votre présentation. Nous souscrivons à vos quatre axes prioritaires. Uh, en particulier, face aux disparités régionales, l'Union européenne dispose d'un outil appelé politique de cohésion économique, sociale et territoriale, que d'autres d'ailleurs nous envient et que nous avons fortement défendu ces derniers mois au sein du comité des régions. Cet outil permet non seulement d'accompagner les processus de rattrapage, de transition économique et sociale, mais surtout, il garantit une forme d'équité territoriale entre les citoyens européens. L'accès aux infrastructures de base, l'accès au marché unique, l'amélioration du bien-être social et des conditions de vie plus durables sont théoriquement maintenus grâce aux investissements réalisés dans les villes et régions européennes via les fonds structurels. Pourtant, certains territoires n'en bénéficient pas totalement, les territoires insulaires en particulier, les territoires de montagne, largement soumis aux contraintes géographiques et de marché, telles qu'elles sont euh, reconnues dans l'article 174 du traité de fonctionnement de l'Union européenne. Ces handicaps structurels pèsent sur leur développement, handicaps auxquels viennent se surajouter, nous l'avons entendu euh, il y a un instant, euh, les contraintes du changement climatique. Dans cette perspective, comment la présidence croate envisage-t-elle l'application de l'article 174 du traité de fonctionnement de l'Union dans la prochaine politique de cohésion votre objectif prioritaire de connectivité accrue pour tous 
ne peut-il trouver une application concrète dans ces territoires insulaires et ou de montagne au sein de l'Union, sachant qu'ils recèlent beaucoup de notre biodiversité, sachant aussi qu'ils sont des territoires particulièrement innovants en matière de gestion des déchets, en matière de transition écologique et de tourisme durable. Merci. Uh, I would like to give the floor now to our first uh, Vice President, Mr. Cordero. Thank you, Mr. President. Minister, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you here today with us. Your presidency takes place at a very decisive moment for the EU, MFF negotiations, preparation of the Conference on the Future of Europe, just to mention some. Following your, his meeting with Charles Michel, Charles Michel last Saturday, your Prime Minister said that he would, and I quote, do everything so that in the European Union's next seven-year budget, Croatia was given appropriate cohesion funds, which, he added, were the driver of development and investment, end of quote. We could not agree more than cohesion is a key driver for regional development, not only for Croatia. And your country, as presidency of the EU, took part to the meeting of the Friends of Cohesion, gathered by my Prime Minister, Antonio Costa, on February 1st. The participating countries are reminded that, and I quote, any cuts in the investment capacity of cohesion regions would be unacceptable, acknowledging that existing disparities in the level of development among regions and member states are still substantial and that the impact of the crisis is still present. Europe must strengthen efforts to increase investments that ensure economic, social and territorial convergence with special focus on the last favoured regions. We could not, end of quote, we could not agree more. Very shortly, the European Council will send a new proposal to the Member States ahead of the next week EU Council. I hope we can count on you to take on board our request for a decentralized budget which really supports regional development, notably through a strong EU cohesion policy. The next topic is the preparation of the Conference on the Future of Europe. You know that our committee has been very active to support that conference, but also to ask to be part not only to the plenary meetings of that conference, not only to the citizens' dialogues, but also to the preparation of the conference and to the steering committee. The EU Council President has informed us that he had transmitted our requests to the Croatian Presidency. So, for the sake of clarity, my question is very clear. Are you ready to include the Committee of the Regions as full member with equal status as the other institutions in the preparation of the conference? What do you need us to do to help you help us to get on board? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vasco. We will move now uh, to the members, and uh, uh, I would like to stress out that every member that has asked for, for the floor has one minute. So, Mr. Fernandez Vara. Sí, muy buenas tardes. En primer lugar, felicitarle, señor presidente, y desearle una buena presidencia, igual que la presidencia croata. No reprocho nada a la presidencia, simplemente he hecho en falta la presencia de más mujeres en el, en el buró de este Comité de las Regiones. Eh, la ausencia de más mujeres no nos resta legitimidad, pero sí nos aleja de la realidad de la sociedad en la que, en la que vivimos. No puede haber una Europa fuerte si no hay un marco financiero plurianual ambicioso.
Es imposible que mandemos una señal al mundo de querer más Europa con menos presupuesto. Eso es algo que no se sostiene bajo ningún eh, punto de vista y eso tenemos que eh, ponernos de manifiesto en las próximas semanas y en los próximos meses. El mundo necesita más Europa y más Europa necesita más presupuesto. Y necesita una política agraria que dé una respuesta adecuada a las necesidades que el campo tiene hoy. En España los agricultores y los ganaderos están en las calles. Y están en las calles porque con lo que reciben por la venta de sus productos no pueden vivir. Porque de la cadena de valor de producción alimentaria el que menos dinero gana es el que, al que más trabajo le cuesta, que es precisamente el productor primario. Y la respuesta que podemos dar no es la de... Eh, hacer una política agraria a la defensiva. Tiene que ser una política agraria que defienda de verdad los intereses de los agricultores y los ganaderos de la Unión Europea. Gracias, señor presidente. Thank you. Ms. Magyar. Tisztelt elnök úr, miniszter úr. Örömmel látom, hogy a horvát elnökség mottoja az erős Európa a kihívások világában a 2011-es magyar elnökség mottójával csak nem azonos. Én olyan Európában hiszek, amely erős, szuverén nemzeteken és erős régiókon alapul. Önöknek történelmileg kialakult identitásuk, egyedi a kultúrájuk és a tradícióik is vannak. Mi itt a teremben mindannyian sajátos nemzeti és régiós identitásra építhetjük a közös jövőnket. Ez az áloga a kihívások sikeres kezelésének. Az EU erősebb lesz, ha önök a szándékaik szerint hangsúlyt helyeznek az EU bővítésére. A magyar szert határnál élő Csongrád megyei politikusként nagyon várom, hogy a szomszéd tartomány egy képviselője is köztünk ülhessen egyszer. Bízom benne, hogy önök horvátok eredményesen töltik be a közvetítői szerepet a tanács és az EU intézményei között, megtartva pártatlanságukat az összes tagállamra vonatkozólag. Köszönöm. Thank you. Let's move now to Ms. Budino. Monsieur le ministre, Monsieur le Président, je vais hélas rajouter à l'inquiétude déjà exprimée concernant la politique de cohésion, son budget et les critères d'allocation des fonds. Bien sûr, nous défendons la nécessité du fonds de cohésion et désormais du fonds de transition juste, mais nous défendons également une conception en quelque sorte universaliste de cette politique de cohésion. Elle doit générer un effet levier pour chacun de nos territoires, quel qu'il soit, et permettre à tous les porteurs de projets de se sentir partie prenante d'un destin commun européen. C'est pour cela que nous plaidons pour la nouvelle définition des catégories en transition, telle que proposée par la Commission, c'est-à-dire entre 75 et 100% de la moyenne du PIB européen. Redescendre le plafond à 90%, comme semblerait le proposer M. Charles Michel, aurait des conséquences graves pour de nombreuses régions. En France, par exemple, pays très vaste, où les inégalités territoriales s'accroissent, c'est bien par une forte mobilisation des fonds structurels qui soutiennent des politiques adaptées aux spécificités locales que l'on peut agir le plus efficacement possible contre ces inégalités. Nous comptons donc sur la vigilance de la présidence croate, monsieur le ministre, pour que la proposition de la Commission sur les régions en transition reste en l'état et ne soit pas modifiée. Et nous vous en remercions. Merci beaucoup. Uh, the floor now goes to Mr. Kobor. Köszönöm, elnök úr, tisztelt miniszter úr. Délnyugat Magyarországot képviselem Pécs városát, amely ezer éve szimbiózisban él Horvátországgal, és a horvát nemzetiség meghatározó szerepet játszik régiónk életében. Egy elemre szeretnénk kitérni, amelyben nagyon sokat várunk a horvát elnökségtől, Konkrétan azt, hogy a történelmi közlekedési folyosókat állítsa helyre, különös tekintettel a tömegközlekedésre, a vonatra. Egy példát mondok, a Budapest, Pécs, Eszék, Szarajevó, Tengerpart útvonal már a törökkor óta létezik és meghatározó. A jugoszláv háború után is gyorsvonati közlekedés volt itt, óriási segítség lenne. Ez most valamiért nem működik évek óta. Kérem, állítsák helyre a történelmi közlekedési folyosókat. Köszönöm. Thank you very much, Mr. Salzberger. Mr. 
Ja, Herr Präsident, Herr Minister, ich möchte ganz kurz auf die Frage der Erweiterung eingehen, weil das ja auch ein Schwerpunkt der kroatischen Präsidentschaft ist. Ich darf sagen, dass wir alle große Hoffnung in die kroatische Präsidentschaft setzen, um den derzeitigen Stillstand bzw. die Blockade im Erweiterungsprozess zu beenden. Kroatien kennt die Situation am Westbalkan wahrscheinlich am besten unter allen EU-Mitgliedstaaten. Wir haben auf dem Thessaloniki-Gipfel 2003 den Ländern des westlichen Balkans die Beitrittsoption versprochen. Es geht also auch um die Frage der Glaubwürdigkeit der EU gegenüber diesen Ländern, die ja alle umgeben sind von EU-Mitgliedstaaten. Was aber ist geschehen in der Zwischenzeit? Serbien und Montenegro laufen die Verhandlungen sehr schleppend. Nordmazedonien hat unter größten innenpolitischen Problemen die Namensfrage gelöst. Und Albanien hat sehr viel getan in der Reform äh, im Justizbereich. Und trotzdem kommt es nicht zur Aufnahme von Verhandlungen. Es geht nicht um die Frage des Beitrittes, sondern um die Aufnahme von Verhandlungen. Und äh, ich bin auch sehr froh, dass die Kommission jetzt notwendige Reformen vorgelegt hat für den Beitrittsprozess, aber der sollte auch die Aufnahme von Verhandlungen nicht verzögern. Ähm wenn sich nämlich die EU weiter zurückzieht, dann kümmern sich andere um diesen Teil Europas und das wollen wir sicher alle miteinander nicht. Ich hoffe, dass bei der Sonderkonferenz der kroatischen Ratspräsidentschaft im Mai wirklich ein Fortschritt festzustellen ist. Ich würde auch sehr bitten, dass auch Vertreterinnen und Vertreter des Ausschusses der Regionen dort mit eingeladen werden. Und ich wünsche in diesem Sinne der kroatischen Präsidentschaft viel Erfolg. Thank you, Mr. Marusic. Poštovani predsjedniče, uvaženi ministre Malenica, dame i gospodo, Europa se neuzostavljivo mijenja kroz procese globalizacije. Demografske i klimatske promjene te digitalna revolucija pridonose ubrzanom trendu uključivanja sve većeg broja dionika u procese. Sve razine vlasti, posebice one na lokalnoj i regionalnoj razini, moraju preuzeti svoj dio odgovornosti za Europu kako bi ona postala vidljivija, učinkovitija, demokratskija i bliža svojim građanima. Prioriteti hrvatskog predsjedanja, Europa koja se razvija, Europa koja povezuje, imaju izraženu gospodarsku dimenziju. Želimo graditi zadovoljnije i bolje društvo, vodeći računa o potrebama svih generacija razvijenjem politika koje stvaraju bolje radne i životne uvjete. Gospodarski rast i održivi razvoj na vrhu su liste nacionalnih i evropskih prioriteta. Zaštita okoliša i borba protiv klimatskih promjena zajednički su cilj svim zemljama Unije. Prilagodba tržišta, rada kroz obrazovanje, približavanje Unije građanima samo su neki od smjerova zajedničkog djelovanja odbora regija. Vjerujem da ćemo svi zajedno, a sa predsjedanjem Republike Hrvatske, ustrajati u tom putu gradeći bolje Europu za sve ljude koji žive u njoj. Hvala lijepo. Thank you. We're going now to Mr. Horvath. Kostanom se pan tisat ministaru. Minto som se došao. Muito obrigado, senhor presidente. Gostaria por começar por desejar os maiores sucessos à sua presidência. Também à presidência croata os maiores sucessos é então um importante momento do futuro europeu e se me é permitido ao meu compatriota e camarada Vasco Cordeiro a dizer-lhe o orgulho que temos pela sua eleição. Excuse me, sorry, desejamos... sorry, 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 dear colleague. I said Mr. Horvath, who is... Oh, I'm sorry. Has the floor. Sorry, It's sorry. Okay. okay, sorry. It's okay, no problem. May I? Köszönöm. Tisztelt okay. Minister úr. Mint a szomszédos ország, sőt Horvátország, a magyar-horvát határ közelébe lévő város Nagy Kanizsa képviselője örömmel üdvözlöm a horvát elnökség fél évére vonatkozó elképzeléseiket. Mindenek előtt nagyon várjuk Önöket a Schengen jövezetben. Kérjük, hogy a következő hónapokban határozottan képviseljük az erős európai kohéziós politika szükségességét 2021-2027 közötti időszakra, és fordítsanak rengeteg energiát a tárgyalásokra a kompromisszum elérésére. A jó kompromisszum fontosabb, mint a gyors kompromisszum. Az önök által megfogalmazott célok ambiciózusak, a végrehajtásukhoz számíthatnak támogatásunkra. Különösen nagy gondot kell fordítanunk a szociális Európa megteremtésére, előre kell lépni az európai minimálbér és az igazságos adózási szabályok tekintetében is. Vissza kell nyerni az európai polgárok erős, hatékony, szolidáris Európába vetett hitét, és ehhez az önök elnökségi időszaka is egy hatalmas lehetőség. 
Sok sikert kívánok a következő fél évre. Thank you. Mr. Horta. Agora sim, Sr. Presidente, para lhe desejar os maiores sucessos na sua presidência, também os maiores sucessos na presidência croata, agradecer a presença do Sr. Ministro e seja-me permitido dirigir ao meu compatriota e camarada Vasco Cordeiro, dizer-lhe como estamos honrados com a sua eleição e como lhe desejamos os maiores sucessos pessoais e políticos. Sr. Presidente, nós entendemos que o futuro da Europa passa fundamentalmente por mais democracia e mais solidariedade. Mais democracia significa maior envolvimento dos órgãos políticos dos Estados-membros, fundamentalmente dos órgãos legislativos, nas decisões europeias. E também uma maior participação dos cidadãos nessas mesmas decisões. Maior participação dos cidadãos que deve ser assegurada pelos órgãos de poder local numa ótica de maior descentralização e de maior regionalização. Isto com óbvio impacto eh, no, na importância política do nosso Comitê. Maior solidariedade, porque democracia sem solidariedade é um conceito largamente vazio de conteúdo. Maior solidariedade significa dar ao projeto, à política de coesão, dar-lhe a importância de alicerce fundamental na construção Europeia, com os óbvios reflexos que deve ter no envolvimento do orçamento e no respeito do orçamento, exatamente por esta opção, fundamentalmente no que respeita aos fundos estruturais essenciais ao desenvolvimento de tantas regiões da nossa Europa. Muito obrigado. Thank you. Mr. Karajanis, please. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ κύριε Πρόεδρε. Σα εύχομαι από καρδιά καλή επιτυχία στο δύσκολο έργο που έχετε αναλάβει τόσο σε εσά αλλά και στην ομάδα σα. Όσον αφορά την ανάληψη τη Προεδρία του Συμβουλίου τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση από την Κροατία, θέλω να πω ότι αυτή συνέπεσε με την αποχώρηση του Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου από την Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση. Και θα ήθελα να ξέρω, κύριε Υπουργέ, ποιε είναι οι ενέργειέ σα για προώθηση τη διεύρυνση τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση με την ενσωμάτωση των Δυτικών Βαλκανίων στην Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση, λαμβάνοντα υπόψη την απορριπτική απόφαση του Ευρωπαϊκού Συμβουλίου τον Οκτώβριο του 2019 για την έναρξη ενταξιακών διαπραγματεύσεων με Αλβανία και Βόρεια Μακεδονία. Ποιε οι προτάσει σα για περαιτέρω προσέγγιση με τα Δυτικά Βαλκάνια και ιδιαίτερα με τη Βοσνία Ερζεγοβίνη. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Εμεί σα ευχαριστούμε και να περάσουμε τώρα. Uh, we're going to Michael Murphy. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, can I once again uh, highlight uh, the important uh, role that cities and regions, that the Committee of the Regions can play uh, in promoting the, uh, the benefits, the opportunities that uh, free trade agreements present for our regions and, more importantly, for our SMEs? Uh, in this context and indeed the wider context of uh, global trade, can I welcome the fact that the Croatian Presidency puts reform of the World Trade Organization at the heart uh, of its programme. Uh, the EU must, uh, must play a leading role uh, in the WTO uh, modernisation uh, process. Uh, global tra trade, just like trade within the single market, uh, must, rem must remain fair and open based on effective and, and enforceable rules uh, that provide a level playing pitch uh, for our SMEs. Finally, can I press upon uh, the Croatian Presidency to support our call for the re-evaluation of existing programmes uh, in line with EU competition uh, rules uh, to support uh, cities and regions that are adversely, adversely affected by trade wars. Thank you very much, Mr. Polk. Hvala gospodine predsjedniče, uvaženi kolege, poštovani ministre Malenica, pozdravljam vas prije svega u ime Hrvatske zajednice Županija, krovne organizacije regionalne samouprave u Republici Hrvatskoj. Naše, odnosno Hrvatsko presjedanje Vijećem Europske unije svakako evo čujemo od više govornika dolazi u vrlo bitno, možda i prelenom trenutku za Evropu, pa time i za cijeli svijet. Vođeni sloganom Snažna Evropa u svijetu punom izazova, Vjerujem da sve razine vlasti moraju participirati u strateškim ciljevima i razvoja, i povezivanja, i zaštite, i povećanja utjecaja koje smo u stvari izabrali kao predsjedatelji. 
U tom kontekstu moram pohvaliti napore vlade Republike Hrvatske da reformom kojom su regije preuzele više od 200 novih administrativnih procesa od strane države, odnosno državne uprave, nastavlja raditi vrlo kvalitetno na racionalizaciji, na optimizaciji, a i digitalizaciji javne uprave. Smatram da upravo procesi digitalizacije javne uprave mogu jako doprinijeti izazovima koje namiče, nameće ova aktuelna četvrta industrijska revolucija. Potaknuti dobrim primjerima, svakako želimo još više implementirati moderne tehnologije i u procese javnih usluga gdje su naši građani u fokusu interesa. E-uprava potiče i otvorenost, potiče učinkovitost, potiče participaciju, smanjuje mogućnost sukoba interesa i netransparentnost, drugim riječima, djeluje antikoruptivno. I u konačnici dovodi u stvari do povratka povjerenja u institucije, što mislim da je jedan ako ne glavni, dugoročno jedan od ciljeva svih naših nastojanja ovoga i svih evropskih tijela. Pa tako, evo, molim da i ovom prilikom budete partner u tom procesu. Hvala lijepo. Thank you very much. O lovo storosto, gostadino, o gorasto, para kalo. Ευχαριστώ κύριε Πρόεδρε, καλή επιτυχία. Καλή επιτυχία και σε εσάς και στην Προεδρία της Κροατίας που έχει μια χρυσή ευκαιρία. Παρακολουθώντας την ευρωπαϊκή κοινωνική δυναμική βλέπουμε ότι υπάρχουν αναδυόμενοι κίνδυνοι. Ατυχήματα παραμονεύουν. Περιπλοκές μπορούν να εμφανιστούν ανά πάσα στιγμή. Και βλέπουμε ότι οι πολίτες ανησυχούν για τη μετανάστευση. Ανησυχούν για το δημογραφικό. Ανησυχούν για τις δουλειέ ανησυχούν για την ασφάλεια. Είναι ζητήματα τα οποία πρέπει άμεσα να αντιμετωπιστούν. Να αντιμετωπιστούν ίσως και με τη διαχείριση αυτών κρίσεων, αλλά μέσα από μια εξειδικευμένη επιτροπή διαχείρισης κρίσεων. Μικρός ο προϋπολογισμός. Ναι, αλλά πρέπει να βρούμε τα κατάλληλα εργαλεία, να τα επεξέρθουμε, με λίγα να κάνουμε πολλά. Και πώς γίνεται αυτό. Γίνεται μέσα από μια θεσμική επανάσταση στη, στη γεωμετρία της γραφειοκρατίας, αλλά και στη δυναμική της ταχύτητας, της υλοποίησης των έργων, τους, ώστε να έχουμε γρηγορότερη μόχλευση. Χρειάζεται χέρια η Ευρώπη, χρειάζεται μυαλά και λύσεις. Και όχι ασφαλείς ρητορίες. Απαιτείται δουλειά. Σας ευχαριστώ πολύ. Εμείς σας ευχαριστούμε, κύριε Γοραστέ. I would like now to give the floor to the minister so that he can make his conclusion. Minister. Thank you. Uh, dear members of European Committee of the Regions, thank you for all these important questions. I hope I will answer anyone's questions. Uh, starting with the question of the conference of the future of the Europe, As you saw from the December European Council conclusions, we believe that priority should be given to implementing the strategic agenda agreed in uh, June last year and to delivering concrete results for the benefit our, of our citizens. The Presidency is aware of a letter Mr. Lambert sent on, on this subject in December 2019 to our Prime Minister and we will study the resolution that the Committee of the Regions is adopting today. On our side, we are advancing in our work on a Council position as a basis for negotiations between the institutions. We should build on the successful holding of citizens' dialogues and include a broad consultation of citizens, including at local and regional level as part of the process. We think that the conference should focus on substance, for instance, globalization, sustainability and the green transition, innovation and the digital transformation, fundamental values, rights and freedoms, and the EU's international role. Its governance should reflect the inter-institutional balance and the structures should be lean and efficient. Regarding the strategic long-term vision for a climate-neutral economy, we welcome the European Council conclusions of 20th of December, endorsing the objective of reaching climate neutrality in the, two, in the EU by 2050. In regards to the European Green Deal, 
The Green Deal sets out, sets out a roadmap for key policies and measures aiming at addressing the urgent cl climate and en uh, environmental challenges facing our planet. The Presidency shares the view of the Commission that the European Green Deal represents a new growth strategy for transforming the EU into a just, prosperous society with a modern, climate neutral, resource efficient and competitive economy, where economic growth is decoupled from the resource use. Meeting Green Deal objectives will require a significant increase in investments, both private and public. In that regard, we took note of Sustainable Europe Investment Plan and Just Transition Mechanism. We are aware of the horizontal nature and the broad scope of policy areas within this dossier. Therefore, we intend to engage all relevant council formations for discussion. In relation to gender and development, the rights of women and girls as well as gender equality is a priority of the Croatian Presidency. Significant process has been made globally towards achieving gender equality. Nonetheless, achievements remain uneven across regions and within countries. In many parts of the world, girls and women continue to be systematically left behind and discriminated again. During our term, we will focus on the evaluation of the EU Gender Action Plan 2016-2020 and on the continued implementation of the joint EU-UN Spotlight Initiative to eliminate violence against women and girls. When we talk about enlargement and Western Bank, enlargement is one of our key priorities. It remains a strategic investment in peace, stability and development in Europe. The European Council in October agreed to revert to the issue of enlargement before the Western Balkan Summit, which will, be, which will be hosted in Zagreb in May. The Presidency will continue to work on the Commission's recommendations to open accession negotiations with Albania and the Republic of North Macedonia, paving the way forward. In this context, I would like to Retrate how important it is that the both candidate countries continue to make concrete progress on the reforms. I am convinced that the soon enough these efforts, which first and foremost are to improve the lives of the citizens, will result in the well-deserved opening of accession negotiations. And lastly, the question of neighborhood development and international cooperation instrument. The MFSF is top priority for our presidency. Following the discussion at the December European Council, the President of the European Council has carried out extensive consultation with the counterparts. On this, on this basis, he will submit in view of the General Affairs Council of 70 February his proposal for a deal at the level of European Council. The Croatian Presidency fully supports the view that the deal must be found swiftly. This will not be easy, as we all know, because there is a still in many parts an expectation gap between what we want to achieve at EU level. But postponing the effort to reach this deal would not make these things easier, quite the contrary. A balanced agreement reflecting ambitious objectives of the strategic agenda at the level of the European Council in February is necessary to open the way for concluding the negotiations on the many pending sectoral co-decision files so as to be ready for, be for the beginning of the new cycle in January 2021. I very much hope that we will achieve that objective and the Croatian Presidency will do all it can do to respect that. To conclude, I will repeat that I have already said we are looking forward to cooperating with you in achieving the EU's future objectives. And thank you once again for your attention.
So, Minister, thank you very much uh, for being here today with us. It's a great honor. Uh, I think that the discussion was very fruitful. We are going to have a very close cooperation with the Committee of the Regions, with the Council, and uh, of course with you on the Conference uh, on the Future of Europe, the Green Deal, the FMFF, and of course the cohesion policy and other policies that are affecting everyday lives of uh, citizens in our cities and regions. And uh, I will close this uh, point of our agenda by thanking the Minister for his time and uh, by repeating once more that we are ready to support and to play a key role for the good of Europe on the future of the Union. So just use us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister, for your time. Senhoras e senhores membros do Comitê das Regiões, vamos proceder com os, prosseguir com os nossos trabalhos e passamos à votação do relatório sobre o alargamento. Peço ao relator desse relatório, Jaroslav Linka, que faça o favor de tomar o seu lugar, de maneira a podermos prosseguir com os nossos trabalhos. Eu passo a palavra ao relator. Dámy a páni, kolegovia, na úvod niekoľko poznámok k tejto téme. V máji 2019 Európska komisia uverejnila oznámenie o politike rozširovania Európskej únie 2019 spolu so správami jednotlivých kandidátskych a budúcich kandidátskych krajín. Európska komisia uverejnila aj osobitné stanovisko k žiadosti Bosny a Hercegoviny o členstvo v Európskej únii. Po prerokovaní v komisii CIVEX v novembri 2019 predkladám výboru regionov návrh stanoviska k tomuto oznámeniu a poskytnúť tak chcem Európskej komisii, Európskemu parlamentu a rade odporúčania v tejto oblasti z pozície miestných a regionálnych samozpráv členských štátov EÚ. Cieľom môjho návrhu stanoviska bolo zamerať sa na špecifické otázky, ktoré sú predmetom osobitného záujmu miestných a regionálnych samozpráv a na základné hodnoty a princípy, ktoré výbor regionov tradične obhajuje. To je princíp subsidiarity, princíp viacúrovňového riadenia a princíp riadenia v partnerstve. Navrhujem preto stanovisko, ktoré v zmysle mandátu výboru regionov poskytuje konkrétne odporúčania Európskej komisii, parlamentu a rade, ale aj politické odporúčania adresované samozprávam kandidátskych a budúcich kandidátskych krajín. Európska únia musí byť dôveryhodná a dôveryhodnosť znamená aj dodržiavanie sľubov. Rada Európskej únie 
by mala začať teda prístupové rozhovory so Severným Macedónskom a Albánskom, ako to teraz v predošlom bode už bolo hovorené. Tak ako to odporúča Európska komisia, Európsky parlament a Európsky výbor regionov. Taktiež by mala naliehavo liberalizovať víza pre obyvateľov Kosova, tak ako to odporúča Európska komisia, parlament a Európsky výbor regionov. Dôveryhodnosť si však vyžaduje aj podniknúť konkrétne kroky, ktoré pomôžu kandidátskym a budúcim kandidátskym krajinám napredovať. V krajinách Západného Balkánu je potrebné zastaviť politický nátlak na miestných politikov, na občianskú spoločnosť a na nezávislé médiá. Musíme viac investovať do trvalo udržateľného rozvoja miestných spoločenstiev z dola nahor a do budovania ich základných stavebných blokov, to je občianskej spoločnosti, nezávislosť médií a miestnej samozprávy, inak bude miestná demokracia v Európe naďalej oslabovať. Bez aktívneho zapojenia miest a regiónov Západného Balkánu nebudeme schopní dosiahnuť ciele OSN v oblasti trvalo udržateľného rozvoja do roku 2030, ale ani skutočný úspech v procese budovania rozširovania Európskej únie. Rád by som veľmi krátko ešte zareagoval a na vývoj situácie od poslednej redakcie môjho návrhu stanoviska. Kongres miestných a regionálnych samozpráv Rady Európy v Štrasburgu vyslal do Bosny a Hercegoviny monitorovaciu a pozorovaciu komisiu a v októbri 2019 roku prijal odporúčania k stave miestnej a regionálnej demokracie v Bosne a Hercegovine, ktoré tiež reaguje na absenciu komunálnych volieb v Mostare. Európsky súdny dvor pre ľudské práva v Štrasburgu v rozsudku z 29. októbra 2019 v prípade Baralia versus Bosna a Hercegovina potvrdil, že absencia komunálnych volieb viac ako 10 rokov je porušením článku 1 protokolu 12 Európskeho dohovoru o ľudských právach. Politické strany v Bosne a Hercegovine sa následne zaviazali zorganizovať komunálne voľby v Mostare v októbri 2020 v rámci všeobecných komunálnych volieb. Budeme im v tom držať palce, aby tento záväzok sa podarilo konečne splniť. Musia pochopiť, že táto vec je vážnou prekážkou preto, aby Bosna a Hercegovina napredovala ďalej v smere do Európskej únie. Na záver chcem poďakovať všetkým tým, ktorí mi pomohli, s ktorými som mohol konzultovať tieto témy. S pani veľvyslankyňou, vedúcou misie Bosna a Hercegoviny pri Európskej únie, pani Eminou Merdan, s pánom Petrom Šeligovom, prezidentom siete Združenie miestných samozpráv juhovýchodnej Európy na LAS a primátorom mesta Skopie, ďalej Goronanom Milevským, ministrom pre miestnú samozprávu Severného Macedónska, pani Katarínou Maternovou, zástupkyňou generálneho riaditeľa, generálneho riaditeľstva Európskej komisie pre rozširovanie a susedstvo a samozrejme aj môjmu expertovi Borisovi Tonhauserovi. Ďakujem. Muito obrigado, senhor relator. Está aberto o debate. Alguém quer intervir? Não, passamos à votação. Nós temos seis propostas de alteração. Passamos à votação da primeira proposta de alteração, que é uma proposta apresentada pelo relator. Alguém deseja intervir? Não, passamos à votação. Quem vota a favor da proposta de alteração número 1? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Aprovada por maioria. Aprovada a proposta número 1, cai a proposta número 1. Passamos à proposta número 2. Alguém quer intervir? 
Passamos à votação. Quem vota a favor da proposta número 2? Obrigado. Contra. Obrigado. Abstenções. A proposta número 2 foi aprovada. Passamos à proposta número 3. Não há intervenções. Quem vota a favor? Obrigado. Quem vota contra? Obrigado. Quem se abstém? Obrigado. Aprovada a proposta número 3. Passamos à proposta número 4. Não há intervenções. Passamos à votação. Quem vota a favor? Obrigado. Quem vota contra? Obrigado. Quem se abstém? Proposta número 4 foi aprovada. Passamos à proposta número 5, apresentada pelo relator. Não há intervenções. Quem vota a favor? Obrigado. Quem vota contra? Obrigado. Quem se abstém? Aprovada. Aprovada a proposta 5 do relator, cai a outra proposta 5. Passamos à proposta 6. Não há intervenções, passamos à votação. Quem vota a favor? Obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Está aprovada a proposta número 6, passamos agora à votação do restante documento com as propostas incorporadas. Quem vota a favor do parecer? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Está aprovado o parecer do Comitê das Regiões sobre o alegramento. O meu agradecimento ao relator. Muito obrigado. Passamos... Passamos ao ponto 17 sobre o papel das regiões e das cidades para o desenvolvimento de África. Eu peço ao relator, Robert Zeman, que tome o seu lugar, de forma a podermos passar... Robert Zeman is on his way. Tenho a palavra. Okay. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I will speak Czech because uh, it's a better. I'd like to... Uh, dobrý den, dámy a pánové. Uh, dovolte mi, abych uh, krátce uvedl stanovisko uh, uh, výboru regionů, přispění regionů a měst uh, k rozvoji Afriky. Já bych chtěl říct, že toto stanovisko je spíše než o rozvojové pomoci, o zestílení a budování kapacity vztahů a nejprve třeba na politické úrovni, později na společenské a ekonomické úrovni mezi evropskými regiony a městy a africkými regiony a městy. A to za účelem, aby posléze na principu subsidiarity, to znamená na práci ze zdola a podle potřeb lidí dole v našich městech a obcích, ale především v těch afrických, jsme mohli na základě partnerství spolupracovat. To stanovisko bylo prosím vypracováno především proto, aby umožnilo z nějakého dlouhodobého hlediska zapojení lidí z našich regionů a měst v práci, v budování projektů, které umožní právě v Africe zlepšení životních podmínek a dají tak třeba lidem mnohem větší víru ve svoji vlastní budoucnost tam doma a zároveň z dlouhodobého hlediska pomohou snížit zájem o neřízenou migraci do Evropy. 
Já bych si velmi přál, aby se toto stanovisko stalo nějakým nástrojem nebo subjektem, který bude ve velkém zájmu našich čelních představitelů, to znamená Evropské rady, Evropské komise, národních vlád, poněvadž tu naši budoucí práci mohou samozřejmě využít případně v různých strategických politických jednáních, která povedou se svými protějšky z Afriky na všech možných úrovních. Z toho samozřejmě plyne jedna věc, že by bylo vhodné, pokud by se nám povedlo, a v tom stanovisku je to uvedeno také, co nejdříve navázat nějakými pilotními projekty, které by mohly být, já jsem si to nazval, a je to prosím jenom pracovní věc, moje osobní, třeba zahájení nějakou skupinou ochotných z měst a regionů, které jsou zastoupeny tady ve výboru regionů. A díky této skupince, která by zahájila třeba pilotní projekty, které by mohly být, a zase je to jenom úvaha, třeba pod záštitou přímo Evropské rady, tak začít naplňovat vlastně tohle stanovisko v praxi a zkoušet tak, zda ta teoretická východiska, která jsou tam uvedena, je možné naplňovat. Dámy a pánové, máme před sebou materiál, na kterém jsme různě společně pracovali více jak rok. Ten materiál dostal, doznal v procesu různých změn a máme před sebou materiál, který je v mnoha ohledech kompromisní, tak, aby bylo možné, aby s ním pracoval v podstatě kdokoliv z nás zde z výboru regionů. Já bych chtěl poděkovat všem, kteří se na té práci podíleli. V mnoha ohledech to byla velmi otevřená práce. A, a pevně věřím, že se nám povede i co nejdříve uvést skrze ty pilotní projekty v život. Velmi děkuji za svému expertovi, který tady zatím není, za pomoci všem, kteří mi s prací pomáhali. A to je asi na úvod vše. Děkuji. Muito obrigado, Robert. Passamos ao debate. Alguém deseja intervir? Tem a palavra... Horta. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Muito brevemente para dizer que li o parecer com atenção e esse é um tema extremamente estimulante para todos nós. Apenas um conselho, ouvir ao CDE, ao Centro de Desenvolvimento ao CDE, que muito tem trabalhado nesta matéria e ter em conta sempre a necessidade de dois parâmetros. Primeiro, a estabilidade política nesses países, que é sempre fruto de intranquilidade para quem neles investe, e, em segundo lugar, o papel das instituições financeiras, nomeadamente o Banco Africano de Desenvolvimento, no financiamento desses projetos. Se assim for, eu creio que há um campo muito interessante para explorar nesta matéria. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. Mais alguma intervenção? Sr. De Koster, tem a palavra. Oui, Monsieur le Président, mes chers collègues, je m'adresse au rapporteur pour le remercier du travail que nous avons essayé de mener ensemble. Je sais qu'il y avait un certain nombre de thématiques qui lui tenaient à cœur de pouvoir exprimer au travers de son rapport. Nous avons échangé car nous avons considéré que les thématiques, notamment migratoires, avaient déjà été largement couvertes par un certain nombre de travaux quelques-uns euh, que j'ai rédigés, d'ailleurs euh, moi-même, et je remercie le, le rapporteur d'avoir entendu ce message, car il nous permet d'avoir euh, une ligne beaucoup plus claire, beaucoup plus directe sur ce que nous souhaitons comme engagement de la part des autorités locales et régionales pour le développement de l'Afrique. Et donc je tenais à, à souligner cette bonne collaboration. Muito obrigado. Mais alguma intervenção? Não havendo, passamos à votação. Temos cerca de 20 propostas de alteração e passamos à proposta de alteração número 1. Não havendo intervenções, passamos à votação. Quem vota a favor da proposta de alteração número 1? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. Quem se abstém? Está aprovada a número 1. Passamos à proposta número 2. Não há intervenções. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Está aprovada a proposta número 2. Passamos à proposta número 3. Quem vota contra? Quem se vota a favor da proposta de alteração número 3? Muito obrigado. 
Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. É melhor passarmos ao voto eletrónico. Está aberta a votação. Muito obrigado. Está fechada a votação eletrónica. A proposta foi aceite. Passamos à proposta número 4. Quem vota a favor da proposta número 4? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Vamos à votação eletrónica. Está aberta a votação. Está encerrada a votação. Foi aceite a proposta de alteração número 4. Eu ponho, sugiro que haja um voto em bloco dos pontos 5, 6 e 7. Alguém se opõe? I propose we have a block vote for amendments 5, 6 and 7. Anyone opposes? Vamos proceder à votação. Quem vota a favor das propostas de alteração? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. Quem se abstém? Propostas foram aprovadas. Proposta de alteração número 7. É parte do, do voto em bloco. Passamos à proposta de alteração número 8, apresentada pelo relator. Quem vota a favor da proposta de alteração número 8, apresentada pelo relator? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. Quem se abstém? A proposta está aprovada. Cai a proposta número 8, que não tinha sido apresentada pelo relator. Proponho uma votação em bloco para as propostas de alteração número 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 e 14. Alguém se opõe? Se não, passamos à votação em bloco. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. Quem se abstém? Foram aprovadas as propostas de alteração referidas 9 a 14. Proposta de alteração número 15. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Vamos a uma votação eletrónica. Está fechada a votação. A proposta foi aceite. Passamos à proposta número 16. Se esta proposta for aprovada, cai a 17. Proposta 16. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? A votação é eletrónica. Está aberta. Nice. 
Está fechada a votação. A proposta foi aceite. Proponho uma votação em bloco dos pontos das alterações 18, 19 e 20. Alguém se opõe? Não, não é 17. 16 was approved, so 17 falls. Block vote for amendments 18, 19, 20. Anyone opposes? Let's vote. Who votes for? Against? Abstention? It was approved. And passamos agora à votação final do parecer. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? O parecer está aprovado. Os meus parabéns ao relator. Muito obrigado. Passamos agora ao relatório Towards Sustainable Neighborhoods and Small Communities Environment Policy Below Municipal Level. Eu peço ao relator Gaetano Armal que tome o seu lugar. Muito obrigado. Tem a palavra. Grazie, Presidente. Intanto vorrei ringraziare chi ha collaborato alla redazione di questa proposta di parere, i dottori Panozzo, la dottoressa Garzillo e Agnes Cabidisca che ha dato un grande contributo per l'elaborazione in questi mesi. Mi permetto di dedicare la illustrazione di questo parere oggi alla figura di Vittorio Bachelet, il vicepresidente del Consiglio della Magistratura italiana, 40 anni fa ucciso da mano terrorista all'Università di Roma. E pertanto nel suo ricordo eh, dedico queste riflessioni sulla politica ambientale di livello infracomunale verso quartieri e piccole comunità sostenibili. Le politiche ambientali europee, come voi sapete, sono orientate a una nuova centralità del tema dell'ambiente, soprattutto nella prospettiva del Green New Deal. È una proposta verde ed inclusiva per un'Europa che entro il 2030 batta del 50% le emissioni di CO2 e nel 2050 addirittura raggiunga la carbon neutrality. E in questo contesto si svolgono appunto le iniziative del nostro Comitato delle Regioni che hanno puntato a un coinvolgimento delle autonomie locali e regionali in una strategia di mutamento profonda del modello di sviluppo e di crescita che punti all'economia circolare, alla tutela dell'ambiente. Come è noto, nei Paesi membri dell'Unione Europea non vi è un'organizzazione un omogenea dei livelli di governo. È noto che vi sono regioni e stati che hanno un livello di governo inferiore con comuni e province, altri stati che non hanno alcun livello di governo, o quello provinciale o addirittura quello subcomunale. Il tema è proprio della entità subcomunale che ad esempio in Italia, nel mio Paese, è individuata nel nelle circoscrizioni e nei quartieri. Le politiche ambientali negli ultimi anni nella delineata prospettiva del Green New Deal hanno imposto all'Unione di ritrovare una nuova ambizione, una capacità di guardare al futuro, di pensare al superamento di quello che l'Agenzia Europea dell'Ambiente ha definito un deficit ecologico europeo. Il parere si sforza per l'appunto di orientare eh, l'azione delle istituzioni europee nella prospettiva delle piccole comunità infracomunali, quelle insulari, quelle eh, delle, eh, 
zone montane che poc'anzi eh, la consigliera Meupertui richiamava nella richiesta di applicazione dell'articolo 174 del Trattato sul funzionamento dell'Unione Europea. È quindi necessario promuovere un concetto di comunità sostenibile in modo da coinvolgere tutti i territori, proprio partendo dai livelli di governo più piccoli, quelli più prossimi ai nostri cittadini, quelli che ci possono far riconquistare, come diceva il Presidente del Comitato delle Regioni nel suo discorso di insediamento, di farci riavvicinare ai nostri cittadini, rendendo la politica ambientale una politica che coinvolge le frazioni, le parrocchie, i quartieri, i distretti, le circoscrizioni, le diverse entità che l'Unione Europea conosce come livello subcomunale. E quindi eh, il parere è rivolto proprio a introdurre meccanismi che consentano di rafforzare questa politica di coinvolgimento delle comunità infracomunali a partire dal uh, rafforzamento eh, dell'informazione, da qui l'esigenza di orientare un'azione sulla web e quindi sulla sulla, sulla rete per dare più informazioni e coinvolgere di più le comunità locali, ma anche eh, quella di introdurre un, un premio per il quartiere eh, sostenibile che in qualche modo eh, consenta annualmente di valorizzare le esperienze dei territori che di più si sono eh, contraddistinti nella capacità di guardare all'ambiente, di guardare al alla, alla, eh, raggiungimento dell'obiettivo. Quindi una giornata europea dei villaggi e dei quartieri sostenibili e eh, un dialogo con la Commissione europea che eh, ha fatto del Green New Deal una politica centrale ma che deve attraverso comuni, province, ma soprattutto il livello subcomunale, quelle piccole entità, raggiungere l'obiettivo nel più breve tempo possibile. Eh, grazie. Molto obrigato. Abrimos agora o debate. Tem a palavra McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice President. Uh, can I thank the Rapporteur for this uh, very insightful opinion? Um, it is very true to say um, that smaller cities and municipalities and communes are an important voice in the debate on all aspects environmental. Um, within smaller municipalities, cooperation and capacity building can be stronger and the buy-in by citizens can be stronger. Um, for us, uh, and in, in this particular debate, I think it's very, very important um, to reflect on the work being pursued and being showcased by Envy. Um, I picked up this uh, brochure, Mr. Vice President, um, within the member's village outside and it's got a fantastic array um, of best practices in it. I think it's also very important to reflect on the work of EU projects such as Urbact, Interreg, um, the EU Sustainability Award, the European Greenleaf Award, the Covenant of Mayors, the EU Urban Agenda, Environmental Partnerships, uh, and also um, projects that are being financed by the EIB um, through their Urbis Advisory Services. Um, and also, I, I, I see, Mr. Vice President, um, this afternoon that three of these brochures were created by our trainees um, and it actually contains really, really valuable information um, on rethinking our waste. And I'd like to thank them and thank the Rapporteur for this opinion. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Mais alguém deseja intervir? Não há intervenções. Passamos à votação das propostas de alteração. Temos uma proposta de alteração que eu coloco agora a votação. Quem vota a favor da proposta de alteração que foi apresentada pelo relator? Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Está aprovada a proposta de alteração apresentada pelo relator, cai a outra proposta de alteração que havia sido apresentada e passamos agora à votação final do documento. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? O relatório, parecer, está aprovado. Muito obrigado, Guiatano, e os meus parabéns. O nosso próximo relatório era sobre o Brain Drain in the EU, addressing the challenge at all levels. 
Infelizmente, o relator Emil Bock não está presente neste momento na sala. Eu pergunto se alguém se opõe a que passemos ao ponto 20. Ao parecer sobre culture in a union that strives for more the role of regions and cities. Alguém opõe-se? Se não há oposição, eu peço ao relator desse parecer, Vicenzo Bianco, que tome o seu lugar e tem a palavra. Grazie, Presidente. Dal momento in cui ci è stata affidata la relazione di questo parere, noi abbiamo ottenuto uno dei risultati importanti che il parere si prefiggeva ed era quello di concentrare l'attenzione dell'Unione Europea e dei suoi organismi sul tema della cultura e dei beni culturali. La prima esposizione del programma della Presidente della Commissione Ursula von der Leyen non aveva previsto la cultura e i beni culturali tra le priorità della Commissione. Eh, anche a seguito del dibattito che il nostro parere ha suscitato e dei consensi che ha registrato, abbiamo visto che c'è stata una modifica di rotta. Oggi i beni culturali e la cultura sono considerati una priorità, giustamente, nel programma della Commissione europea. E abbiamo registrato anche che la Presidente della Commissione ha affidato un incarico in una delega a una commissaria esattamente sul tema della cultura e dei beni culturali. Che cosa ci previgiamo con questo parere? La principale, il principale obiettivo è quello di non considerare i beni culturali soltanto dal punto di vista della loro conservazione, del loro restauro. Il nostro progetto di parere chiede attenzione all'Europa nei confronti dei beni culturali anche sotto il profilo del loro utilizzo, della capacità di creare turismo culturale, in particolare tra i giovani, e di favorire la cultura come un elemento di, di integrazione e di creazione di una cultura europea vera e propria. Noi abbiamo il dovere di fare questo. Pensate che oltre 400 su un totale di 1120 siti dichiarati patrimonio mondiale dell'umanità da parte dell'UNESCO ricadono nei nostri paesi, da Malta alla Finlandia, dal Portogallo a Cipro, ciascuno dei nostri paesi esprime una grande tradizione culturale. Ma non dobbiamo vivere solo di passato, dobbiamo fare in modo che i beni culturali e la cultura possano essere un fattore di sviluppo e anche economico, di conoscenza, di accesso, di cittadinanza europea. Dobbiamo fare in modo di poter incrementare significativamente gli investimenti nella cultura e di favorire anche le opportunità digitali. Il senso del nostro Paese, del nostro parere, è esattamente questo e con questo spirito lo sottoponiamo all'attenzione del Comitato delle Regioni per fare in modo anche, e questo è un elemento importante, che esso sia portato avanti in modo eh, unitario e in modo convincente. Questo parere nasce da un'iniziativa italiana nella città di Agrigento, che quest'anno festeggia 2600 anni dalla sua fondazione, 2600 anni, ed è stato votato e eh, sostenuto da tutti i comuni italiani, indipendentemente dal loro politi, dal loro, dalla loro politica e da tutte le regioni italiane ed è, credo, un sentimento comune sottoporlo all'attenzione di un grande continente come quello europeo. Grazie, Presidente. Molto obrigado, Vicenzo. Abrimos agora o debate. Tem a palavra McCarthy e segue-se Rausio. McCarthy, tem a palavra. Grazie, Margaret. Las Octoran. Cowell on Europe. Gannar cultura kest a curinsha. Sin an fog of Willem Torres Shaw Co Havak Tok, August and Fog of Willem Eg Takuga Lauderlesh, Tosivrish, Eg Gwint La Cultur, August Tangakta, Narejun Timple La Horapa, August Kahar Kosent, August Takiak the Hortlesh and Sivrik Shaw Kor Konkin, Nikart, 
Daru, the Ain of Reeve Kerr, Eon Kultura, Hogan Dina Lakela, Crohon She Fostiokt, Coron She La Crohiokt, Hot, August Tashbanta, Govil Narts Kultur, Gutugan Rejun, Nehorbica, Europa Lakela. Gumagas. Muito obrigado. Tem a palavra a senhora Rossio. Sari Rossio. Kiitoksia, arvoisa presidentti. On hienoa olla täällä mukana ja kulttuurin esiin nostaminen juuri näinä aikoina on erinomaisen tärkeää. Tulen itse vanhasta kulttuurikaupungista, Hämeenlinnasta, Suomesta. Ja juuri näinä aikoina kulttuuri auttaa meitä ymmärtämään toisiamme, auttaa löytämään niitä yhteisiä asioita, niitä yhteisiä arvoja, joita tänään täälläkin keskustelussa on monessa puheenvuorossa peräänkuulutettu. Haluaisin nostaa esiin vielä erikseen lasten kulttuurin merkityksen. Etenkin ikääntyvässä Euroopassa meillä on erinomaisen tärkeää tarjota mahdollisuus joka ikiselle eurooppalaiselle lapselle tutustua omaan kulttuurinsa, eurooppalaiseen kulttuuriperimään ja sitä kautta oppia elämää yhdessä ja luomaan sitä parempaa tulevaisuutta. Kiitos. Ja, ich bedanke mich auch für den Berichterstatter, für die Arbeit, die geleistete Kultur hat eine sehr große Bedeutung für die Entwicklung Europas. Das ist insbesondere auch sichtbar geworden im europäischen Kulturerbejahr vor zwei Jahren. Ich möchte deshalb hervorheben, dass die Kulturinvestitionen, die hier angesprochen worden sind, weiter gestärkt werden müssen und auch gesichert werden müssen im nächsten Jahr und dass das Programm Creative Europe weiter fortgeführt wird. Ich will es an einem Beispiel festmachen. Wir haben sehr viele Interessenten in dem Bereich der Theater, die die am Austausch mit anderen Künstlerinnen und Künstlern in anderen europäischen Staaten interessiert sind. Wir wissen, dass es auch dort Interesse gibt, dort entstehen Netzwerke. Und bei diesem Austausch geht es um Fragen, die wir hier politisch verhandeln, die dort auf der Bühne in einer anderen künstlerischen Form verhandelt werden und auch an die Bürgerinnen und Bürger Europas herangebracht werden und deren Reflexion aufnehmen. Das sind natürlich auch kritische Reflexionen, das müssen wir uns gefallen lassen. Das halte ich auch für richtig so, aber das ist wichtig für die Verankerung des europäischen Gedankens für die Zukunft im muito obrigado, Sr. Vop. Neste momento não há mais pedidos da palavra. Passamos à votação. Há uma proposta de alteração que foi apresentada para este relatório, mas, entretanto, há um compromisso que foi alcançado, compromisso oral, que foi alcançado no âmbito desta proposta de alteração. Vicenzo, peço-lhe que explique. Presidente, sí, sim, temos substancialmente acolto a requesta que, anziché falar de um significativo incremento, eh, parla de uma alocação adequada das ressources, quindi accolto sostanzialmente, naturalmente considerando sempre prioritario l'intervento sulla cultura per le ragioni che lo ispirano. Quindi lo facciamo proprio con questa precisazione. Molto obrigado. Há un pedido da palavra do Sr. De Coster. Oui, Monsieur le Président, mes chers collègues, simplement pour expliquer la raison qui nous a amené à engager cette discussion avec notre collègue pour pouvoir trouver la juste mesure. Euh, évidemment, et c'est un ancien vice-président en charge de la culture de sa région qui parle, la culture est absolument prioritaire dans notre société et c'est tout l'objet du rapport. Mais il nous a semblé qu'il était important d'être cohérent avec nous-mêmes dans nos positions sur le cadre financier pluriannuel où nous avons choisi de donner un certain nombre de priorités et donc de pouvoir être cohérent avec ces positions précédentes et affirmer notre intérêt et notre attention à une politique culturelle au niveau local ambitieuse C'est la raison pour laquelle il ne nous semblait pas possible d'appeler de, 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 de nos voeux à une augmentation significative et que nous préférons effectivement la proposition qui vient de nous être présentée et que nous nous rallions à celle-ci. Muito obrigado. Passamos, não havendo mais intervenções, passamos à votação desta proposta de alteração na versão do compromisso oral que foi apresentado. Quem vota a favor? 
Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. Quem se abstém? Muito obrigado. A proposta de alteração foi aprovada. Passamos agora à votação final global do parecer. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. Quem se abstém? Muito obrigado. O parecer foi aprovado. Vicente ou os meus parabéns. Muito obrigado. So, dear colleagues, we are continuing our uh, debate and our discussions. We will move now to the next topic of our agenda, which is a debate on the Conference on the Future of Europe. We have today with us, and it's a great honor and a privilege, one of us, former mayor, today vice president of the European Commission, Ms. Dubranka Suica, and it's a, it's a real privilege because, as I said earlier, she's a, a former mayor, twice elected mayor of, du of Dubrovnik, and so it's a, a discussion, since she will be responsible for the Conference on the Future of uh, Europe. It will be a discussion with someone who understands what we have been di discussing throughout uh, these last days and today. The fact that if we want to speak of a future of Europe, then we need more democracy. And more democracy means more involvement for the regions and the cities. So I'm really happy we had a very fruitful meeting earlier together and uh, let me thank you for addressing our institution today, Vice President, uh, during uh, this first mandate, first meeting in our mandate, and only a few days after the Commission adopted the communication of, on the Conference of uh, the Future of Europe. We welcome your call to engage with uh, the representatives of uh, the regional and local authorities and with the European Committee of the Regions, Europe must change to be closer to its citizens, capable of listening to them, addressing their real needs, and act to make their lives better. This is why we exist, and this is why the European Union exists. We have to rebuild trust, though. We have to rebuild trust and faith to the people, and this can only be done through representativeness and inclusiveness. And of course, regions and cities can play better than anyone else this role. Let me send a warning signal in today's meeting. If it is not to be another disappointment, the Conference on the Future of Europe must be open and inclusive must avoid being top-down, centralized in Brussels. This would only generate more mistrust and increase the gap between the European institutions and the citizens. If the three main institutions are serious about turning the conference from an institutional debate into a tool 
to put citizens first, they need to take on board local and regional elected politicians. We, 329 of us, represent 1 million directly elected politicians. We will assure that the conference of can build on the work done by the Task Force on Subsidiarity in which we were very active. EU's legitimacy must be based on the representativeness ensured by all its elected European politicians from local, regional, national and EU levels. If the Union fails to count on all its elected representatives, it will fail in rebuilding trust and the discussion about the future will fail as well. So I'm really happy because after our meeting today, I see a woman, a politician, that is determined to do the exact opposite of what we are afraid that might happen in the discussion on the future of Europe. So I give you the floor. And I welcome you warmly again, and I'm certain that we will have a great collaboration together in the, in the months and the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Dear President uh, Tizi Kostas, dear members, uh, before I start, uh, let me thank you uh, on being elected uh, to this very, very important uh, role and looking forward to our cooperation uh, in future. Let me thank you for inviting me here today to talk, to address this uh, constitutive plenary session of the Committee of Regions. As you already heard, as a former mayor myself, it is a particular pleasure to meet with you, all of you regional and local representatives. As I said, I'm looking forward to work with you during your presidency of the Committee of the Regions, and I wish you best of the luck. As you know, you mentioned that we adopted a few uh, weeks ago, it was 22nd of January, when the College adopted a communication on the Conference on the Future of Europe. As you know, uh, the communication is based on the President von der Leyen political guidelines and the European Council strategic agenda. We have to put a question. Why are we doing this at all? Why are we starting this conference? This is a key question. The answer is important. The impetus behind the Conference on the Future of Europe is that citizens are asking to have a greater say in policy making beyond elections, not only in four, uh, once in four years, not only once in five years, but we must respond to this call and to be in constant dialogue with citizens. As part of that response, I am committed to visiting regions in my role as Vice President, and I want to hear from citizens from all corners of the European Union, not just the capitals. So we are not going only to capitals. We will visit regions. We will uh, visit peripheria. We will visit mountains, islands. So my first message to you today is clear. We want to make a success of the Conference on the Future of Europe. Don't doubt in it. We can only do this with the full support of the Committee of the Regions. We need you as our partner. This is my key message today. We have the capacity to mobilize one million local politicians. One million politicians are elected. Let me say that figure again. One million local and regional politicians. We are talking about, about over 70 regional legislative assemblies, 240 regions, 80,000 local authorities. These people are key in reaching out to all citizens. I see them all as our partners. The resolution you have adopted today provides us with a solid basis for our partnership. I welcome your commitment to promote debates on EU issues in regional parliaments and municipal, municipal councils. I like your idea of being decentralized and going beyond the national capitals. I agree with your view that 
A particular focus on young people is necessary. However, let's not treat them as a separate entity. They are an integral part of the process. I support your call for a bottom-up debate you mentioned in your introductory statement. I will also support your call to be an integral part of any governance structure relating to the conference. Most of all, I note your intention to sign the joint declaration. This is the good news I was waiting for. It shows true commitment on your side, as well as courage. After all, this is a new and innovative process. We haven't done anything similar before at this level. I also look forward in March on local and regional authorities in the permanent dialogue with citizens. I'm looking for your opinion. Thank you to the members of the CIVEX Commission for your work on this. Where are we now? What are our next steps? As I said, the Commission has presented the communication on the Conference on the Future of Europe. The European Parliament has adopted its resolution. The Council is advancing in its work. There is no time to waste, no time to lose. Although we have already started consulting and listening, there is broad agreement to officially launch the conference on 9th of May. We would like to launch it in Dubrovnik under the Croatian presidency. The next, next step must focus on the joint declaration. Why? Joint declaration among three institutions, Council, Commission and the Parliament because this declaration will formalize the details on the conference. It will bring together these three institutions, all focused on a common goal. Others can also commit to its guiding principles. I believe that we can already agree that the process must be guided by non-negotiable principles, such as inclusiveness, openness. It must be interactive and structured in order to make it a legitimate success in the end. Most of all, I believe that predetermining the outcome would cause more damage to democracy than if we did nothing at all. So, of course, some guidelines or some guidance is necessary in order to structure the debate and facilitate the feedback. Let us not underestimate the task ahead. It is a real challenge, but we are not starting from scratch. We can build on the 1,850 citizens' dialogues held over the last five years. The only problem with these dialogues was that there was not feedback mechanism. So now we are establishing the feedback mechanism of the process, which is very important, and it was a missing element in the citizens' dialogues. We must ensure that citizens can see the impact they have had on policy making. This will be our benchmark for the success. President von der Leyen has committed to ensuring follow-up, and I intend to see it through. Another essential element is the new multilingual digital platform. We see this multilingual digital platform as the one-stop shop for all information on the conference and related events. It should ensure maximum transparency and openness for all citizens. What do we discuss? What are we going to discuss? So when these details are in place, what do we talk about? How we decide this? These are important questions too. We must provide structure to enable discussion and feedback, as I already said. This is not preempting the debate or results. So we don't want to preempt, we don't, not, we don't know to know the results. We agree on two clear categories. One is policy and other is institutional. Why institutional? If we want to approach 2024 elections with clear rules, we have to know as soon as possible what are the rules relating to transnationalists and to Spitzenkandidat process or lead candidate process. This is the reason why we have to have two strands, one institutional, which is may be less important, and, other, and another one, which is policy regarding daily issues. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, we have started a deliberative democracy process at European level. 
We have not done this before, but we have some experience to build on. The deliberative democracy train is leaving the station and the European Union must be on it. That is one topic not contested. The citizens are clear on that. There are other details that need to be ironed out. This includes how we communicate on the conference to the citizens. A unique common identity will make it instantly recognizable for all citizens and partners. It is vital that each and every one of us takes ownership of the, city, of the conference. So the ownership of the conference will be, held by, will be held by all of us, not only Commission, not the Council, not the Parliament, but also Committee of the Regions. Each one of us with our own valuable contribution and role in the process. I began my speech with the word partnership, and I will end it by saying that you have a partner in me as Vice President for Democracy and Demography. I will come back again. I will try to uh, again discuss the demographic challenges that we must tackle together. This is another part of my portfolio which is also very, very important. For now, I would like to hear from you the voices of the regions across the European Union about the Conference on the Future of Europe, and uh, I may answer some of your questions. So thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Vice President. Um, I think that we should now start with our political group representatives first. Mr. Geblevich from the EPP. Dear Vice President, welcome. Dobro, dobro došli on behalf of EPP COR group. As uh, someone who has the experience of managing cities a request in your city, you have the full legitimacy uh, to lead the way uh, forward on the future of Europe, and you have our full support on that. We in the EPPCOR see a great need for shared ownership in this conference between different levels of governance in Europe and in all EU institutions and bodies. So I appreciate that this is the way you are going to work. This requires a lot of coordination and consensus. I am optimistic that we will achieve it in the name of our citizens for prosperity of our regions and for the future of our union. Therefore, EPP supports the idea of joint declaration on the conference, but we think that the COR should co-sign co this text, because democracy it is not only, not only European issue. It is, it has its European, national, as well as local dimension. So it is our expectation, I would say. Madam Vice President, in the front of you, you, you stand a house of members, not house of cards, house of members, who are directly accountable to the people as, and stand close to their concerns. I believe that the input of the COR will be one of the pillars to transform the conference from the, an interinstitutional into a truly bottom-up consultation. So thank you for your declarations that you see it in the same way. Besides that, we can count, as our president in you said, uh, for more than a one of million of regional local uh, local elected representatives in the EU, uh, in our regional councils, assemblies and parliaments. And we will support them to organize town hall events with the citizens. So thank you for your declarations that you are now be 
together with us in our cities. Thank you very much. Many of our regions and cities have established new participative tools to engage people in their policy, uh, policy choices. EPPCOR is of the opinion that, this, that the time has come to recognize those tools and to use them in public consultations in the next two years. And this will be also a way to bring back the interest of young people in the European Union and our ability to reform. Dear colleagues, I believe that the COR with its six commissions should use its competences to structure the output of citizens' consultations in proposal for action. This will help us to produce long-term, tangible and concrete ideas which could evolve into legislative proposals. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Giblevich. <clears throat> I would like now to move to the PES representative, Mr. Mrs. Honey. Jit. Sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin Schwitzer, vielen Dank für die Vorstellung Ihrer Pläne. Im Namen meiner Fraktion der SPE bin ich gespannt auf den Fortgang der Verhandlungen zwischen dem Europäischen Rat, dem Europäischen Parlament und der Kommission über die Konferenz zur Zukunft der EU und hoffe, dass sich die Vorgaben für die Funktionsweise der Konferenz noch etwas weiter konkretisieren werden, nicht zuletzt im Hinblick auf die Rolle der subnationalen Gebietskörperschaften und des ADR. Unser Präsident hat auch darauf hingewiesen. Die Themen, die die Kommission vorgeschlagen hat, sind ein guter Ausgangspunkt für die Zukunftsdiskussion. Natürlich muss die Liste offen sein, damit die Bürgerinnen und Bürger sich wirksam einbringen können. Dasselbe gilt auch für die regionalen und die nationalen Parlamente. Sie müssen mehr sein als eine Plattform für Bürgerdebatten. Ich glaube aber auch, dass die grundsätzliche Frage nicht so sehr ist, welche Themen die Menschen bewegen. Da herrscht trotz aller nationaler und vielleicht auch regionaler Nuancen doch weitgehende Übereinstimmung. Es geht um den Kampf gegen den Klimawandel, der sozial gerecht gestaltet sein muss und auf die Innovationsfähigkeit der Menschen in den Städten und Regionen setzt. Es geht um die Bekämpfung von sozialen Ungleichheiten und den territorialen Zusammenhalt. Es geht um die Umwälzung, welche die Digitalisierung, die Migration, aber auch die Alterungsprozesse unserer Gesellschaften mit sich bringen. Und es geht um die Rolle Europas in der Welt und darum, wie unsere politischen, sozialen und wirtschaftlichen Systeme auf all diese Veränderungen reagieren können, ohne die Spaltung zu vertiefen. Vor diesem Hintergrund ist klar, dass sich die Konferenz vor allem damit befassen muss, welche Prozesse, Politik, Politiken und Instrumente die Europäische Union braucht, um auf diese Fragen Antworten geben zu können. Das und nichts anderes erwarten die Bürgerinnen und Bürger von uns, den politisch Handelnden der verschiedenen Ebenen. Es geht also nicht um eine Selbstbespiegelung der Europäischen Union und ihrer Institutionen. Aber gerade vor dem Hintergrund der als gemeinsam identifizierten Aufgaben muss sich die Konferenz insbesondere auch mit der Frage befassen, unter welchen institutionellen Bedingungen und mit welchen Ressourcen die EU in die Lage versetzt werden kann, die aktuellen Herausforderungen zu bewältigen. Dabei ist aus unserer Sicht völlig klar, dass auch Debatten über Vertragsveränderungen kein Tabu sein können. Wichtig ist auch, dass von Anfang an klar sein muss, welche Art von Ergebnissen erzielt werden sollen und wie mit ihnen umgegangen werden wird. Wir als SPE-Fraktion haben deshalb eine Reihe von Änderungsanträgen zum gemeinsamen Entschließungsentwurf eingebracht, die deutlich machen, die Konferenz sollte als klares Ziel die Formulierung von konkreten Vorschlägen für Gesetzgebung oder Vertragsänderungen haben, die in einem nächsten Schritt im Vorfeld der Europawahlen 2024 diskutiert werden müssen und dann als Ausgangsbasis für einen zukünftigen Konvent dienen sollten. 
Uns ist dabei auch wichtig, dass wir den vom Europäischen Parlament vorgeschlagenen doppelten Ansatz unterstützen, nämlich auf der einen Seite ein Konferenzplenum, in dem die Institutionen und auch der ADR angemessen vertreten sind, und auf der anderen Seite ein System von möglichst weitreichenden, dezentralen und vielschichtigen Bürgerdialogen, die ihrerseits mit dem Konferenzplenum aufs engste verzahnt sein müssen. Nur so könnte die Konferenz wirklich zur Mobilisierung der Bürgerinnen und Bürger für eine neue Phase europäischer Integration beitragen. Dafür brauchen wir aber die klare Unterstützung der anderen Institutionen und nicht zuletzt der Kommission in ihrer Rolle als Motor der europäischen Einigung. Sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, vielen herzlichen Dank. Thank you. We will now move to the representative from the Renew Europe. Mr. De Coster. Merci, Monsieur le Président, Madame la Vice-Présidente, mes chers collègues. Autant vous le dire, Madame la Vice-Présidente, le fait que Madame von der Leyen vous ait confié au sein du Collège la responsabilité de discuter avec les institutions européennes de l'organisation de la Conférence sur l'avenir de l'Europe a été une bonne nouvelle pour nous. Nous en sommes félicités. Votre parcours, la mairie de Dubrovnik, la vice-présidence du Congrès des pouvoirs locaux, tout nous incitait à considérer qu'il y avait là un geste fort fait vers les représentants des autorités locales et régionales. Malheureusement, à espoir vif, désespoir ou déception vive quand nous voyons aujourd'hui le sort qui nous est réservé. Quand un député européen sur cinq siégera à l'Assemblée plénière de la conférence, quand 100% des gouvernements seront participants, évidemment, à l'Assemblée plénière et que trois commissaires sur 27 siégeront, eh bien, seul un sur 100 de nos membres pourra participer. Voilà aujourd'hui la manière dont est considéré le partenariat que vous appeliez de vos voeux et le soutien plein et entier que vous espériez. Non, Madame la vice-présidente, nous vous demandons de revoir avec le Parlement européen et le Conseil la copie. Non pas que nous souhaitons défendre une position institutionnelle, mais tout simplement parce que nous croyons véritablement en l'utilité, j'allais dire en la nécessité impérieuse du succès de la conférence qui est ainsi envisagée. Non seulement pour pouvoir apporter la contribution des autorités locales et régionales, le quotidien que nous avons partagé ensemble un temps lorsque vous étiez maire, mais aussi parce que nous en sommes convaincus, nous allons mettre en place ensuite un certain nombre des mesures qui vont être proposées au moment de la conférence. Et vous trouverez ici sur ces bancs nombre d'élus qui viendraient volontiers participer à la réflexion de la conférence. Notre collègue Raït Pielgas, par exemple, travaille à, à, à écrire en, en ce moment un rapport sur l'utilisation des nouvelles technologies pour pouvoir renforcer la démocratie participative. Et bien d'autres. Je pourrais parler des expériences des correspondants Europe que j'ai mis en place dans, ma, dans mon agglomération. Je pourrais vous parler du programme Erasmus pour les élus locaux que j'ai à de nombreuses reprises essayé de porter auprès de vos prédécesseurs au sein du Collège des commissaires. Voilà, Madame la vice-présidente, le mot que nous essayons de vous faire passer aujourd'hui. Essayez de revoir la copie. Nous, poussons, nous pensons pouvoir être utiles pendant la conférence, mais surtout, nous pensons pouvoir être utiles après la conférence. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Uh, let's go now to the ECR with uh, Mr. Droba. Uh, dear Mr. President, thank you for the floor. Uh, dear Madam Commissioner, I would like to welcome you today on, in the European Committee of the Regions on behalf of the ECR Group. I know you are here today to discuss with us the Conference on the Future of Europe, and I would like to make some suggestions linked to your portfolio and the severe demographic crisis which is going on in Europe. The impact of demographic change on regions needs to be one of the main topics of the conference. I represent a capital metropolitan region, Bratislava, which is affected by demographic changes massively and dramatically. 
There is a huge trend of internal migration towards capital cities, which has enormous impact on infrastructures and increases the demand for quality of public services. One of the most negative consequences of demographic change is poverty. Capital regions like Bratislava have to cope with growing number of homeless people, migrants, and working poverty. According to the EU data, children are the most vulnerable group in Slovakia. The aging population in Bratislava region will double and even triple in some of the parts of the region, and Slovakia will be one of the oldest EU countries in 50 years, according to the Eurostat prognosis. At the same time, 33% of jobs are threatened by automation in my country, so we need to invest in professions which are linked to human care, which can also help us to prevent further brain drain. European Commission have to empower regions with smart policies and just funding to address these difficult challenges. I hope that the Conference on the Future of Europe will focus to a large extent on this topic because our citizens expect debates that will help solve their real-life problems. They do not want more debates on technicalities of electoral systems or other issues that are of little concern to them. The demographic crisis is something that Europeans feel very strongly about. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going now to Ms. Hapanen from the Greens. Yes, Mr. President, um, Mrs. Um, Vice President of the Commission, uh, when we talk about the future of Europe, we should first ask ourselves who are the real experts on designing it. The answer is, it is youth and children. And actually, they have already said what they want. They want a clean environment, they want climate change to be stopped, and they want, not surprisingly, to play in peace. It means that they want a safe environment to be children and grow to become responsible adults. That is their right and that we must guarantee as adults now and in the future. And now, when we know what the children and youth want for the future of Europe, for their future, we need only to find the tools and methods how to get the good design to become real. Uh, I will speak in Finnish now. Kaupungissani Oulussa meillä on tapana kysyä, meillä on tapana kysyä lapsilta ja nuorilta heidän ideoitaan kaupungin kehittämiseksi. On monta tapaa tehdä tämä. Esimerkiksi olemme ottaneet nuoret mukaan päätöksentekoelimiimme. Myös Paikallispoliitikkomme, kaupungin valtuutettumme ovat halukkaita menemään kouluille ja kadulle tapaamaan nuoria oppiakseen, mitä nuoret ajattelevat tulevaisuudesta. Nuorissa on paljon potentiaalia kehittää uusia osallisuuden ja demokratian menetelmiä ja uudenlaisia tapoja tehdä päätöksiä. And now in English. We, the Greens, believe that the Committee of Regions and locally and regionally elected politicians, these million people that you are talking about, we can be one effective tool when we want participation and implementation of the good ideas and purposes in a local level. That is why the Greens, among the other parties here, it seems, we are here to encourage very much the Commission and the Council to listen with a sensitive ear what people in the regions and communities, young and old, have to say and to take into account seriously the new tools and methods for promoting democracy. Thank you. Thank you very much. The EA now, please, with Mr. McCarthy. Uh, dear Vice Commissioner, um, can I thank you for your frankness and your genuineness um, to begin with? Um, can I say, I think the Committee of the Region's principal worry is that we're not going to have a seat on the Conference of the Future of Europe. Um, and I think we're all standing before you with that frustration 
and that concern. And you've rightly mentioned we represent one million people. Uh, and even yesterday, the Committee of the Regions um, launched a book, um, and there's 230 pages of ideas and 25 years of experience crammed into the book. Um, and we're just worried that you're not going to harness that, and that we won't actually have a voice. Um, and, it, and also the conference, like, it will only make sense if it actually leads to tangible results uh, and an outcome which actually will create a positive change in citizens' um, lives. And I am delighted to hear that this is not a, what I call a box-ticking exercise, um, that this is actually taken very serious um, by, um, by, by the College of Commissioners. Um, I'd also like to refer to um, the Civics Commission uh, and a colleague of mine within the European Alliance, uh, Maria Burrell. Uh, she's a rapporteur and she's currently preparing an opinion on establishing a permanent structured dialogue with citizens. Uh, and I would ask that perhaps you actually take a read of, this, of, of that kind of short opinion. Uh, it might help you. Um, we think the conference might be an ideal opportunity to pilot some of the ideas within the opinion. Uh, and we are very, very happy to share um, your proposals once the opinion is adopted uh, in May um, this year. Um, so I would appeal to you, um, and I know it's also something that our president President and our Vice President have been calling for uh, in the last few hours since their election that we need a seat uh, on the Conference of the Future of Europe. Uh, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now go to our first Vice President, Vasco Cordeiro. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Madam Commissioner, President uh, von der Leyen stated that, and I quote, our union's democratic system is unique, bringing together directly elected parliamentarians at local, regional, national, and European levels with elected heads of state and or government. The Commission, end of quote, the Commission, in its communication on subsidiarity, said, quote, The Task Force on Subsidiarity proposed a new way of working based on active subsidiarity and the more dynamic engagement of all stakeholders and all gov government levels throughout the policy cycle. This would mark an important change in the European Union's policy process Bringing, together, bringing greater quality and legitimacy to the laws it adopts, end of quote. It also said, and I quote, it is essential that the 41 national parliament chambers, 74 regional legislative assemblies, the 280 regions and the 80,000 local authorities who are at the forefront of implementing EU laws are more fully engaged in the policy process. Your speech here today and all of this makes the case for the Committee of the Regions be present in the Conference of the Future of Europe with an equal status like any other institution. So, Madam Commissioner, the case is made for our presence. Madam Commission, the question is not why and how we should be in the Conference of you on the future of Europe. Right now, the question is, why is the Committee of the Regions being excluded from a full participation in the Conference on the Future of Europe? This is my question to you. Thank you. I would uh, suggest that uh, the Vice President answers so far, and uh, then we continue on with... Yes. Thank you for your suggestions, thank you for your questions, and uh, this will be very valuable 
contribution to uh, final, uh, final joint agreement uh, on behalf of three institutions. What I wanted to tell you, let me start from the last question, which was why are you excluded? You are not excluded. This is not true. Uh, this is not true. If you read the uh, Commission's contribution on shaping uh, the, conf the communication on the Conference of the Future of Europe, you, you, you quoted, yes. But uh, we have to start from somewhere, as I said, and we have to have solid basis. So this basis will be done in this institution, Parliament, Commission, and the Council, which, mean, which means your respective member states, 27 of them now. Uh, if I may be open enough or sincere enough, I used to be a member of this House for six and a half years. And the resolution which was adopted uh, here, not here, but in Strasbourg, on 15th of January, this resolution is very, very ambitious, if I may be, uh, if I may be open enough. It is very ambitious. And uh, the structure is relatively complex, but it is only the resolution of the European Parliament. You have another uh, communication from the Commission, on behalf of which I am in lead, together with my dear colleagues Shevchevich and Jourova. And then we have Council. So we are looking forward to the meeting of uh, Mr. Sassoli, Madame Ursula von der Leyen, and uh, Mr. Uh, Charles Michel, in order to agree upon joint declaration of or memorandum of understanding, however we will call this, and this will be the starting point, which doesn't mean that you will be excluded. You are included, but you read uh, from the resolution, you read this member of um, commissioners, uh, Mr. De Coster, you read member of commission, number of commissioners, number of national parliamentarians, uh, uh, role of committee of regions. This doesn't mean that this will be the final document. This is the idea which was proposed by, by your colleagues, uh, for, uh, also from your uh, political family, and they were, they, they were very happy with this. So it was adopted in European Parliament by a vast uh, majority, which, which doesn't mean that it will be the final basis basic uh, document. So this is uh, how I understand this process. We, ha we don't have time to waste, as I said, we don't have time to lose, so we have to do it within the next uh, week or two. So uh, these three important institutions and their, uh, their uh, presidents, they will, they will agree upon this. The other day they met in uh, uh, they met in uh, the vicinity of Paris and they started this debate, but still they haven't uh, finalized this document. Regarding the topics, it, the topics are not limited. I was mentioning political guidelines of European Commission and strategic agenda of European Council. If I may repeat, I know that you know these six guidelines, but let me tell you. The first one, European Green Deal, which you were mentioning, uh, from uh, you, uh, the, uh, sorry for not knowing your name, but Mrs. Uh, Birgit Hone, you mentioned uh, European Green Deal. That you have, then you have digital agenda. Then you have a strong Europe in the world. Then you have economy that works for people. Uh, you have also European way of life, whatever uh, someone can understand under this title. And then you have new push for European democracy. These six guidelines of this commission, they cover almost all the topics. And together with strategic agenda of European Council. But it doesn't mean that the topics are limited. So whoever wants to raise any topic would be, will be allowed to do this. So conference itself. The title might be misleading for someone. Conference doesn't mean one conference. It means series of different conferences, round tables, different fora, so different events, which will be branded as the Conference on the Future of Europe. So once, uh, once uh, this will be branded as the conference, then uh, we can proceed. I mentioned multilingual uh, digital platform. So everything should be there. And it, could, it should be 
open for each and every citizen, not in capitals, not only in villages, but also on islands, on mountains, wherever, uh, all over Europe. This is the idea. So we wouldn't have started this very, very complex exercise if we hadn't believe in it, believed in its success. I have to uh, uh, reiterate once again, so we, the difference between citizens' dialogues and this conference will be feedback exercise. If we don't have tangible results in the end of the exercise, it won't be successful. But we are looking forward to the success, and this is the reason why we have to, uh, we have to establish common guidelines. Uh, I'll tell you an example. Even, even a living room debate can be can be branded as the conference on the future of Europe. So we have to believe in uh, all institutions, we have to believe in our citizens, we have to uh, have common guidelines and then to have feedback, which in the end can be translated into concrete legislation if necessary, into concrete political, uh, uh, political ac actions. I didn't want to mention treaty change here, but if you have read carefully uh, what are the political guidelines and what was the political uh, fine, um, introductory statement from Ursula von der Leyen, if citizens think that we need treaty change, we will debate, but it will be the last option because we have enough, we have enough legislation and we think that we have to use the existing legislation. Regarding institutional matters, I mentioned in my introductory speech, if we start debating institutional issues, citizens won't be happy as uh, you are representative of citizens and you told me now that you won't be happy if we start debating institutional things. But we have to know what, uh, how are we approaching 2024, and this is the reason why one strand of this conference will be dealing with institutional issues, but the majority of issues and topics will be about daily issues, about uh, political guidelines, about the uh, concerns, hopes, uh, fears of our citizens. So everything will be covered. So I, uh, we rely on you, without you, without committee, of the regions without uh, local and regional authorities, we would not be able to do this exercise. This exercise won't be possible. Regarding commission, the role of commission is the role of honest broker. It is the role of facilitator. So commission cannot do anything itself. So parliament is important, I'm, I know, European parliament, but national parliaments are even more important. And of course, once we are in Belgium, regional parliaments. So they are very, very important and we cannot avoid them. So you don't need to doubt, but we have to start from somewhere and the reason for this joint declaration among three institutions is this one. So this will be the starting point. So committee of the regions is not neglected. As I said at the beginning, you are the most important partner, and this is uh, uh, what I can tell you at this stage of the process. I cannot say more this moment because I don't know. And once again, the preemption, the preemption of the results is not possible. Nobody knows what will be uh, what will what will be the results. But we, as I said, we would like to start the conference during Croatian presidency, and we would land during French presidency. You know that Grand Debat uh, was going on in France. It was also successful, successful. So one of the role models can be this. There are different role models all over Europe. I started visiting regions. I was uh, in Estonia, in uh, Latvia, the other day in Eupen here in uh, Belgium. Tonight I'm traveling to um, Castille et Leon in, Fran in uh, Spain. So we are uh, trying to find best practices which are already inaugurated on the ground. So that doesn't mean that this will be top-bottom, top but it will be bottom-up exercise. And it will be 
it will be it won't be monologue as I'm now trying to <laughs> to impose on you. It will be a listening exercise. We have to listen to citizens. As I said, they don't want to be uh, heard only once in four or five years. They want to be heard all the time. This is the reason for this for establishing this multilingual digital platform, and we want to be in constant dial constant dialogue, but first listening. And this is uh, what I'm assigned to do according to my mission letter, which was dedicated to me uh, from uh, President of the Commission. So uh, without communication, without cooperation, this exercise won't be possible and the outcome won't be success. So I'm not negative on this. I heard some uh, may maybe negative um, uh, assumptions, but if you if you read properly the communication from Commission, not only the resolution of the Parliament. I see that everybody read resolution of the Parliament, but some of you have, <laughs> haven't read our communication. So we are on equal footing and uh, let's uh, see what will Council say in a few days and then uh, I think uh, we will continue this debate and uh, don't doubt on our, uh, on our very frank and sincere, uh, sincere idea Yes, and our uh, frank and open and, as I said, transparent approach. So, thank you. Mr. Spaich. Mr. Spaich, please. Sehr geehrte Frau Vizepräsidentin, vielen Dank, dass Sie noch einmal bekräftigt haben, dass der ADA ein Teil des Prozesses sein soll. Nun gibt es unterschiedliche Arten, Teil eines Prozesses zu sein. Man kann ein Instrument sein, um Reichweite in einem Beteiligungsprozess zu schaffen. Man kann aber auch Teil der strategischen Gestaltung eines Prozesses sein. Und ich glaube, die Mitglieder dieses Gremiums hier wollen auch Teil der strategischen Gestaltung sein. Für uns ist das Entscheidende nicht nur der listening Process. Für uns ist das Entscheidende die Konsequenzen, die man aus diesem Prozess zieht, die strategischen politischen Konsequenzen. Und hier wollen wir beteiligt sein und hier würden wir uns wünschen, dass der ADR institutioneller Teil dieses Prozesses ist. Vielen Dank. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, please. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias, señora vicepresidenta, por eh, la visita que va a hacer mañana a nuestra comunidad y por el planteamiento que se ha hecho del, de la conferencia. Pero quería remarcar en esta breve intervención la importancia de que el Comité de las Regiones esté presente, entre otras cosas porque regiones como la nuestra, con un reto demográfico tan importante, regiones que tienen eh, problemas financieros, eh, porque tenemos que dar servicios sociales, sanidad, educación a eh, dos millones y medio de habitantes en 95.000 kilómetros cuadrados, Regiones que tienen, a raíz de esos problemas de igualdad, porque no pueden gestionar eh, su futuro, porque no pueden hacer políticas de inversión de futuro, porque tienen que gastar casi el 70% de su presupuesto en prestar esos servicios sociales, eh, tienen también un problema político y un problema político para toda la Unión Europea, porque estas regiones que tienen pocos representantes en los parlamentos nacionales se sienten abandonadas, se sienten abandonadas en los parlamentos nacionales y solamente instituciones como el Comité de las Regiones son capaces de eh, elevar la voz de estas regiones y evitar problemas políticos como los que han surgido. Solo hay que ver el mapa de la votación del Brexit en las zonas rurales, en las zonas eh, desiertas de eh, nuestra Europa. Señora Suica, si eh, no sacamos la conclusión de que ciudadanos no son solo los que viven en las ciudades, eh, no tendremos futuro en esta Unión Europea. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Mr. Caraxoni, please. Tisztelt Szuika, elnök, alelnök asszony, elnök úr, kedves kollégák! Amikor Európa jövőjéről beszélünk, mindenképpen beszélnünk kell a demográfiai változásról és az ezzel járó kihívásról, ahogyan előttem erről Mr. Droba is beszélt. Két dologra hívnám fel a figyelmüket. Az első, hogy miközben a világ népessége növekszik, az Európai Unióban 2015-ben történt meg először, hogy az Euróstat adatai szerint a halálozások száma meghaladta a születések számát. Elszomorító európai demográfiai valóság. Mivel a születési ráta az alapvető és elsődleges meghatározója a demográfiai trendeknek, a jövőben nagyobb hangsúlyt kell fektetni arra, hogy a családoknak nyújtott különleges támogatások révén ösztönözzük a párokat a gyermekvállalásra. 
A másik fontos jelenség a vidéki területek elnéptelenedése, a munkaerő elvándorlása és az agyelszívás brain drain jelensége, melynek kapcsán kollégáinkkal itt a régiók bizottságában folyamatosan kongatjuk a vészharangot. Éppen ezért a kohéziós politikának a jövőben kiemelt figyelmet kell fordítani a vidéki térségek problémájának megoldására, a már meglévő eszközeinket pedig ennek szolgálatába kell állítanunk. Biztos vagyok benne, hogy Súlyca alelnök asszony személyében partnerre találnak az európai városok és régiók ebben a munkában. Köszönöm szépen. Thank you. I would please like to ask you, dear colleagues, to be less than one minute because the schedule of the vice president is pressing us. Mr. Horta, please. Mr. Horta. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Eu ouvi com atenção a Sra. Vice-Presidente e eu queria, permitia-me, chamar-lhe a sua atenção para o seguinte. Creio que ou o futuro da Europa assenta na democracia ou não terá futuro. E quando nós falamos da democracia, significa seriamente o envolvimento das pessoas através das autarquias e das regiões na resolução dos seus problemas. Portanto, a participação, a nossa participação no Comitê das Regiões, dando voz às, aos municípios e às regiões, creio que é condição essencial do sucesso da, sua, da nossa conferência. Penso que há lições recentes que nós devemos ter muito em conta. O que se passou no Brexit, o que está a passar em tantos países da Europa, fundamentalmente aqueles que são tão importantes para a construção europeia, como a Alemanha e a França, deve-nos preocupar e deve-nos perceber e deve-nos dar, dar a importância do que é envolver as pessoas no projeto europeu. Eu falo em nome de um município que é o segundo mais populoso do meu país. Tenho cerca de 400 mil pessoas. É aí que eu sinto aquilo que é o afastamento das pessoas em relação à Europa. É aí que eu tenho que responder a muitos dos anseios que as pessoas têm. É aí é que eu muitas vezes tenho que confrontar o Governo com aquilo que eu entendo que é o bem-estar das nossas, das minhas populações. Tudo isto tem que ser e tem que ter uma voz ao mais alto nível em termos europeus. Creio que, Sra. Vice-Presidente, e com isto termino, que deve, o conceito de democracia europeia deve nos preocupar seriamente. E eu digo-lhe que preocupa-me quando no Conselho da Europa eu vejo na agenda um tema chamado Mayors Under Thank Pressure. Thank you very much, Eu acabo, Sr. Presidente. Mayors Under Pressure. E com isto significa todo um mundo de problemas em que o nosso comitê, Thank através you. do CIVEX, não deve ser alheio. Muito Thank obrigado. You. Thank you. Mr. Whoop, please. Ja, Frau Vizepräsidentin, ich äh, freue mich und halte es auch für ganz wichtig, dass es endlich nach dem Weißbuch und nach den Reflexionspapieren wieder einen neuen Impuls gibt für die Diskussion zur Zukunft Europas. Der ist notwendiger denn je und ist auch gut ausgerichtet, weil das so breit aufgestellt ist. Ich bin zwar noch skeptisch, hoffe aber, dass der Rat darin auch eine Chance sieht, äh, denn es geht darum, dass wir ein Commitment erhalten zu, ein, zu dem Prozess selbst und vor allem zu den Ergebnissen, die auch ernsthaft umgesetzt werden müssen. Was die Bürgerbeteiligung angeht, so denke ich, ist einiges schon gesagt, Worden. Das muss noch mal diskutiert und vertieft werden. Ich meine, dass der Prozess selbst Möglichkeiten gibt, auch uns als ADR-Mitglieder mit hier einzubauen, weil wir dort vor Ort etwas einbringen können. Es geht auch darum, die Diskussionen so zu gestalten, dass die Themen, die den Bürgern wirklich auf den Nägeln brennen, auch diskutiert werden und dass sie strukturiert, vertieft diskutiert werden und dass es um die Umsetzungsperspektive geht. Für uns werden damit Fragen der sozialen Dimension sicherlich eine sehr große Rolle spielen. Thank you very much, Mr. Frey, please. Frau Kommissarin, es ist sehr zu begrüßen, dass die Kommission der Bürgerbeteiligung mehr Bedeutung einräumt, wenn es um die Zukunft unserer Gemeinschaft geht. Die in meiner Region grün geführte Landesregierung wendet die Politik des Gehörtwerdens seit vielen Jahren an. Dabei spielen besonders die Bürger, die mit dem Zufallsprinzip ausgewählt werden, eine große Rolle, weil sie nicht mit vorgefertigten Sprechzetteln kommen. Ich kann dieses Vorgehen uneingeschränkt unterstützen und empfehlen und auch auf unsere Änderungsanträge im Rahmen der Resolution hinweisen, die auch von einigen Fraktionen unterstützt werden. Denn nur wenn Bürgerbeteiligung auch handwerklich gut 
ausgeführt ist und ernsthaft ausgeführt wird, dann erzielt sie Erfolge. Durch eine scheinbare Beteiligung würde man die Abwendung der Bürgerinnen und Bürger von ihrem Gemeinwesen erreichen und Letzteres wäre Gift für die Gemeinschaft. Es ist zu begrüßen, dass die Kommission den Vorschlag für die Zukunftskonferenz gemacht hat und sich auch weiterhin positiv zu ambitionierten Vorschlag des Parlaments positioniert. Die Kommission muss aber jetzt zu ihrem Versprechen stehen und dieses Projekt bald mit konkretem Inhalt und Dankeschön. qualitativen äh, Gesichtspunkten präzisieren. Danke. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Magyar. Thank you. Uh, tisztelt elnök úr, alelnök asszony, a konferencia sorozat kiváló lehetőséget ad a tagállamok és az érintett felek köztük az önkormányzatok szempontjainak nem csak ütköztetésére, hanem a közös nevezők megtalálására is. Akár a szerződések módosítása is szóba jöhet, azonban vegyük komolyan a szabályokat. A közösen rögzített érvényes szabályok lopakodó megkerülése és felülírása nem fogadható el. Fontos a konszenzus. Nem lehet, hogy egy intézmény, régió vagy egy tagállam dominással rátelepedjen a folyamatra. Mi régiók a folyamat aktív részesei akarunk lenni mindenütt Európában, és nem csak a fővárosokban. Természetesen elfogadva, hogy a végleges döntéseket csak az Európai Tanács hozhatja meg. Utolsó gondolat, be kell vonni a nyugat-balkáni államokat is, hiszen az ő jövőjükről is szó van. Köszönöm a szót. Thank you very much. Mrs. Stanowska, please. Szanowny Panie Przewodniczący, Szanowna Pani Przewodnicząca, bardzo się cieszę, że głos obywateli ma być decydujący, dlatego pozwólcie Państwo, że nie tylko w imieniu mieszkańców Łodzi, ale również 12 metropolii polskich zrzeszonych w Unii Metropolii, poproszę o jedno, poproszę, żeby w ramach toczącej się obecnie debaty, przedstawiciele Komisji Europejskiej zwrócili uwagę na to, aby środki na transformację klimatyczną w ramach Europejskiego Zielonego Ładu mogły być bezpośrednio dostępne również dla samorządów lokalnych. Jesteśmy przekonani, że stworzenie specjalnego programu dedykowanego, operacyjnego programu dedykowanego miastom dałoby nam wszystkim pole do wspólnej współpracy w zakresie wdrażania postanowień Europejskiego Zielonego Ładu, o co serdecznie jako Prezydent miasta zabiegam. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much, Mr. Dobroslavic, please. Hvala predsjedniče, poštovana podpredsjednice Šujica. Demokracija i demografija su područja djelovanja Europske komisije koja su s jedne strane aktualna i zahtjevna, a s druge strane presudna za daljni razvoj država članica i Evropske unije u cijelini. Reći ću to na primjeru demografije. Velik dio Evrope trpi danas negativna demografska kretanja. Slab prirast stanovništva, visok udio starije populacije, odseljavanje iz nerazvijenih u razvijena područja i države, odseljavanje s ruralnih područja u gradove. Posebno se to odnosi na obrazovane i mlade. Moramo naći odgovore na ove izazove. Uvjeren sam da će to podpredsjednica učiniti, jer poznam njenu predanost i njeno iskustvo i također se pridružujem onim mišljenjima da odbor regija treba i može biti partner u ovom poslu. Thank you very much, Mrs. Forde, please. I had the pleasure of meeting Misusha last summer at the EPP Women's Conference in Tallinn and hearing her expertise. Since subsidiarity is a core principle of the EU, I share my colleague's desire that adequate and vital representation from CORE is into the work of the Conference on the Future of Europe. I welcome the draft resolution which calls for existing public participatory democracy tools from local and regional levels. Ireland has great examples of such work. Our Corla Nanog, since you mentioned the youth, is a youth a conference of 31 groups throughout Ireland. We have a citizens' assembly, public participation networks and local community uh, development committees. 
In my own city of Cork, there are over 200 community organisations, pillar and public representatives involved, who can be reached at one click of a button. Imagine, with little additional resources and a clear remit, we can have real people talking about real issues and solutions which directly affect them, directly to the EU for the benefit of all. We do not need to reinvent all of the wheel. However, it is important to find the correct balance uh, between empowering citizens and the role of elected representatives. Uh, members who are accountable, and I urge the conference to ensure that this fine line is respected. Gaurav Mahagod. Thank you very much. Mr. Bianchi, please. Grazie, Presidente. A nostro avviso sarà fondamentale garantire il coinvolgimento della conferenza di tutti i parlamenti nazionali e regionali, i quali godono di maggiore legittimità democratica. Non crediamo che l'unico risultato di questa conferenza possa essere già definito semplicisticamente in una maggiore integrazione europea. I nostri cittadini vogliono vedere un maggior rispetto della sovranità nazionale e una cooperazione a livello europeo soltanto quando necessaria. I nostri cittadini vogliono vedere i loro problemi quotidiani risolti dal livello di governo più vicino a loro e vedere l'Unione Europea in azione solo dove necessario nel rispetto del principio di sussidiarietà. Concludo, Presidente, affermando che in qualità di rappresentanti locali e regionali dobbiamo sfruttare lo slancio di questa conferenza per chiedere un ruolo più forte per il nostro Comitato nel sistema decisionale dell'Unione Europea. Dobbiamo garantire che le opinioni delle regioni siano prese in seria considerazione nelle istituzioni europee, sino anche alla creazione di un vero Senato delle regioni e delle autonomie locali in ottemperanza al già citato principio di sussidiarietà. Grazie. Thank you very much. Mrs. Little Rosman, please. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Geschätzte Vizepräsidentin, natürlich begrüße ich auch ich die Initiative von unserer Kommissionspräsidentin Ursula von der Leyen. Es geht um unsere gemeinsame Zukunft und wir dürfen uns nicht ausrasten auf Erreichtem, sondern wir dürfen sie natürlich auch durchaus engagiert mitgestalten. Aber ich schließe mir allen Vorrednerinnen und Vorredner an, dass es natürlich auch wichtig ist, dass alle maßgeblichen Player, sei es auf der europäischen, auf der nationalen, aber eben auch auf der regionalen Ebene, auf Augenhöhe gemeinsam mit einbezogen werden, weil genau hier in den Regionen wird die Europäische Union äh, im Kleinsten gelebt und verstanden und man ist direkt mit den Anliegen der Bürgerinnen und Bürger konfrontiert. Aber für die Zukunft ist ja auch eine grenzüberschreitende Zusammenarbeit immer mehr wichtig, genauso wie bei uns zum Beispiel in der Euregio, Tirol, Südtirol, Trentino, wo man sehr viele Themen weiterbringen kann und Teilerfolge erzielt hat und in dieser territorialen, aber auch makroregionalen Zusammenarbeit liegt für mich ein ganz großes Potenzial der Zukunft, das wir auch für unsere gemeinsame Zukunft nutzen müssen. Thank you very much. Mr. Schwarzkiffer. Sehr verehrter Herr Präsident, sehr verehrter Herr Vizepräsident, es freut mich sehr, dass ich als jüngstes Mitglied des Ausschusses der Regionen zu einem so wichtigen Thema wie die Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas meine erste Wortmeldung haben darf. Die enormen Lohnunterschiede innerhalb der Europäischen Union sind gefährlich für unsere Zukunft. Nehmen wir das Beispiel meiner Heimatregion, des Komitats Pranau Boronjo in Südungarn, wo man rund 500, 600 Euro netto verdient. Für die gleiche Arbeit kriegt man mindestens doppelt so viel in Westeuropa und dieser Unterschied verursacht eine massive Abwanderung. Unsere weniger entwickelten Regionen werden leer und in den kleinen Gemeinden findet, meine, findet man keine Jugendlichen. Und was wir feststellen können, ohne prosperierende Regionen gibt es kein prosperierendes Europa. Entvölkerte und verratete Regionen können aber nicht prosperieren. Deshalb braucht man in Europa unter anderem auch eine rapide Annäherung der Löhne in West und Ost. Das Thema der Lohnunion soll also an der Tagesordnung der Konferenz sein. Es geht ja um die Zukunft meiner Generation. Dankeschön. Thank you, Mr. Turk. Podpredsjednik Europske komisije, zaista čestitamo na odaberu na ovu vrlo tešku odgovornu funkciju. Znajući vas i kao gradonačnicu uspješnog grada, dijeleći sa vama klupe u Hrvatskom parlamentu prije ponešto godina i kroz funkciju u parlamentu, ne sumnjam da ćete ovaj odgovoran posao raditi i više nego kvalitetno. Dakle, neuspodne činjice da mi u odboru regija 
Gotovo svi dolazimo iz redova lokalnog i regionalnog nivoa, te kao načelnici općina, gradonačelnici, župani, lokalni lideri, u stalnoj smo komunikaciji sa našim gradovima. I zapravo prava spona kada govorimo o temi koja se zove budućnost Evrope. Podsjetit ću se da ste rekli, a nakon zadnjih evropskih izbora, da trebamo iskoristiti upravo zamah visokim odazivom birača na posljednim Europarlamentar izborima, te odgovoriti na taj izazov pozivom na djelovanje. Ja sam uvjerenja, a bilo mi drago da i potvrdite da upravo ove riječi sada to i potvrđuju. Hvala. Thank you very much, Mr. Ranić. Hvala predsjedniče, poštovana podpredsjednice. Europski odbor regija već duže vrijeme naglašava važnost dijaloga građana o budućnosti Europske unije. Kao član odbora regija podržavam ovu konferenciju jer smatram da europski građani žele i trebaju biti uključeni u donošenje odluka. Oni žele da se njihov glas čuje u Europskoj uniji i mi im tu moramo dati priliku da se uključe u različite rasprave. Samo dijalogom sa građanima možemo utvrditi naše prioritete i riješiti pitanja koja zabrinjavaju naše buduće generacije. Komunikacijom s građanima na lokalnoj i područnoj razini možemo dobiti široki raspon različitih stajališta koja održavaju raznolikost u Europi što nam može pomoći u kreiranju lokalnih i regionalnih politika za sveopći napredak naše zajednice. Moram naglasiti važnost pristupa od ozgo prema gore, koji Europski odbor žustro zastupa, s obzirom da jedino tim načinom možemo riješiti probleme naših građana. Ova konferencija nam omogućuje da razmijenimo mišljenje sa europskim građanima, da ih slušamo te da učvrstimo i povratimo njihovo povjerenje u institucije Europske unije. Nadam se, draga Dubrovka, da ćete svoje iskustvo kao dugogodišnja gradonačelnica Dubrovnika podijeliti sa svojim kolegama u Europskoj uniji te time doprinijeti da se glas regionalnih i lokalnih čelnika i europskih građana čuje i u institucijama Europske unije. Hvala. Thank you. Mr. Karajanić, parakalo. Hvalisto varavo ligire projedre, kirijanti projedre bolji su stajba de stinsa o isa, su oti da krati melike i topikes arhese hum pragmato pisi dialogus ki diavolevsis me dus politis sjedika me to melon dis Evropis. Emis akusame, lavame ke stilame da minimata. I politis anisihun, anisihun ja din katastrofin du fisiku perivalontos, ja to prosfiko do me da anstiftiko, ja din eksudergi politiki, ja da kinonika problemata, ja din alilengi me da ksindol laon. Emis Μεταφέρουμε τη φωνή των πολιτών στα ευρωπαϊκά θεσμικά όργανα. Εμείς είμαστε η φωνή των πολιτών στην Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση. Εσείς τι θα κάνετε κύριε Αντιπρόεδρε στη διάσκεψη χωρίς εμάς για μια καλύτερη Ευρώπη και για τη βελτίωση της ποιότητας ζωής των πολιτών. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Εμείς ευχαριστούμε. Μις Φερνάντες Βιάννα, πλείς. Señora comisaria, quiero en primer lugar felicitarla por su nombramiento y darle la bienvenida al Comité Europeo de las Regiones. Vengo de Cantabria, una región de España pequeña, de montaña, que tiene algo muy claro. No habrá futuro para Europa si su población sigue envejeciendo y si no encontramos soluciones viables para este problema. Quiero trasladarle un mensaje de Cantabria. Las regiones estamos poniendo en marcha estrategias para evitar el abandono de las zonas rurales. Las ponemos a su disposición para que desde la Comisión Europea puedan favorecer el interés cambio de buenas prácticas entre los diferentes territorios europeos. Y quiero, para terminar, hacerle una pregunta. ¿Cómo van a contribuir los diferentes programas europeos a paliar las consecuencias del despoblamiento en nuestras regiones? ¿Cómo nos va a apoyar la Unión Europea en el desarrollo de políticas que permitan a Cantabria mantener los colegios, los hospitales, las zonas sociales del envejecimiento de la población y adaptarlo a las políticas de transporte para garantizar la movilidad y aumentar la interconectividad de los territorios en riesgo de despoblación o prácticamente envejecidos. Muchísimas gracias y en Cantabria la esperamos con los brazos abiertos. Muchas gracias. Mr. Tenka, please. Vážená pani podpredsednička, vážení členovia výboru, 
voľby do Európskeho parlamentu a aktivnejšia účasť občanov v nás vzbudili pocit spokojnosti so spôsobom fungovania demokracii v Európskej únii. Ľudia sa opäť začali zaujímať o európske veci verejné a je tu svetlo nádeje, ktoré nám všetkým dáva silu a motiváciu ešte viac bojovať za európsku myšlenku a jej hodnoty. Vítam preto pozvánku do diskusie Európskej komisie všetkých Európanov a hlavne mladých Európanov. Vnímam ju však ako začiatok cesty, na konci ktorej je skutočná participatívna demokracia, v ktorej práve regióny ako nositeľia prístupu z dola nahor predstavujú hnacú silu zmien a pokroku. Preto nás vyzývam, aby toto fórum využilo svoje možnosti naplno. Občania musia reálne pocítiť zlepšenie svojich životov. Sú to práve regióny, ktoré majú nesmierný potenciál ich životy zásadne ovplyvniť. Preto musíme vytvárať ďalšie komunikačné a kompetenčné nástroje na posilnenie tých regiónov, ktoré ich nemajú dostatočné, tak, aby občania videli a cítili ich význam. Ďakujem. Thank you very much and we end our discussion with Mr. Jorgos Patulis. Κύριε Πρόεδρε, όλοι όσοι βρισκόμαστε σήμερα εδώ, μοιραζόμαστε ένα κοινό όραμα και έχουμε συμφωνήσει ότι υπηρετούμε τις ίδιες προτεραιότητες όσον αφορά την ενσωμάτωση των στόχων της βιώσιμης ανάπτυξης στην Ευρώπη. Όμως δεν αρκεί σήμερα να μιλάμε για στόχους βιώσιμης ανάπτυξης εάν δεν αναλάβουμε όλοι μας δράση στις χώρες μας, στις τοπικές κοινωνίες, να δώσουμε νέα πνοή και όθηση στην ιδέα της Ευρώπης, στις αξίες που αυτή πρεσβεύει. Δεν πρέπει να εθιλοτυφλούμε. Σήμερα ζούμε εποχή για λιγο... με λιγότερη Ευρώπη. Ο κόσμος γίνεται όλο και λιγότερο ευρωπαϊκός, όλο και λιγότερο δυτικό. Το κέντρο βάρους των κρίσιμων αποφάσεων που αφοράν το μέλλον των λαών μας, του πλανήτη αλλά και οι πόροι, μετατοπίζονται μακριά από την Ήπειρό μας. Το παράδοξο είναι ότι ακόμα και οι ίδιες οι χώρες μας γίνονται λιγότερο ευρωπαϊκές αφού ισχυροποιούνται πολιτικά δυνάμεις που αμφισβητούν ευθέως το παραδοσιακό ευρωπαϊκό μοντέλο διακυβέρνησης και τις αξίες που εμείς υπηρετούμε. Ο τρόπος διαχείρισης του προσφυγικού ζητήματος είναι ενδεικτικός της αλλαγής που επιτελείται. Η λογική των κλειστών συνόρων δεν είναι λογική της ευρωπαϊκής ιδέας. Η έλλειψη αλληλεγγύης μεταξύ των ευρωπαϊκών κρατών σε μια συμπρά από περιπτώσεις αμφισβητεί ευθέως τον κορμό της ευρωπαϊκής ιδέας. Η έλλειψη επικοινωνίας με το μέσο ευρωπαϊκό, με ευρωπαίο πολίτη ενισχύει την κατάσταση αυτή που για να, για να μην γίνει αναστρέψιμη θα πρέπει να αναλάβουμε πρωτοβουλίες. Η Ευρώπη έχει περάσει και παλαιότερα τέτοιες στιγμές. Αυτή όμως είναι σοβαρή. Οφείλουμε λοιπόν να ενώσουμε όλοι τις δυνάμεις μας για να βρούμε ξανά την ταυτότητά μας. Γιατί κανένα στόχος βιώσιμης ανάπτυξης δεν μπορεί να υπάρξει χωρίς ισχυρή Ευρώπη. Και είμαι σίγουρος κύριε Πρόεδρε εσείς, το Προεδρείο αλλά και όλη η Επιτροπή των Περιφερειών της Ευρώπης σήμερα και όλο το επόμενο διάστημα θα δώσει τη δική του απάντηση. Σας ευχαριστώ πολύ και καλές επιτυχίες στο έργο σας. Ευχαριστώ. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ κύριε Πατούλη. So, uh, Miss uh, Vice President, uh, I think the floor is yours now for your answers, your final comments on this uh, very important debate that we had today and thank you for staying so long. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this uh, valuable exchange of views. This was very, very precious uh, to me. And uh, uh, if I what all of you said was your concern about your voice in the conference and the future of Europe. I want to reassure you once again that your voice will be heard and the voice of citizens will be heard through you. Uh, through you. Uh, not to mention again one million of elected uh, representatives, but not only elected representatives, but the citizens. Someone was mentioning random selected citizens. Of course, this will be one of the, of the uh, one of the methods how to include uh, citizens in this uh, exercise. But if I may say, many of you were concerned with the demographic aspect of my portfolio, with aging and uh, with work and life balance. So let me uh, tell you a few words about the connection about these two words, democracy and demography. Uh, some of uh, 
some of my uh, citizens and colleagues started asking me at the beginning of this term, what do these two terms have in common? But they have a lot of in common. So people, uh, there is evident demographic change all over Europe. People, uh, t people tend to move from rural to urban areas, as you rightly said. People tend to move from east to west, and this is really uh, a challenge, if not to say a problem. So demographic change uh, made or makes people feel left behind. And then they start blaming democracy for such uh, status. So, but democracy is not guilty for demographic change. But they start not believing anymore in democratic institutions. They don't want to take part uh, in uh, democratic elections. And then, uh, but it's not democracy, it's demographic change. So we have to tackle the reasons for this demographic change. We know the reasons, but we have to start, uh, uh, start uh, thinking how to revitalize all these uh, rural areas which are not now uh, uh, without uh, population, and this is what I'm uh, starting to do at this moment. At the end of the March or beginning of April, it's on the agenda of the college, uh, the demographic impact of demography on each and every sector of life in uh, European Union. So this is going to be made uh, by the end of March or beginning April, and then we will see what is the state of play all over Europe. And then after that, uh, we'll try to offer a toolbox. We know that this is within the member states' competence, but still I think recommendations uh, from uh, the European level will, uh, can, can help and can be uh, acceptable. So we know that aging is a problem. In the last 20 years, according to Eurostat, we Europeans live six years more. Living six years more means that someone has to fill in uh, pension funds. Who is going to, fin pe uh, who, who to fill these pension funds? So life expectancy is more and more, and uh, we have to find solutions for this challenge. This is not a problem, but this is a very good opportunity to enhance uh, silver economy. So we are thinking about this, and uh, this will be a horizontal approach uh, with the uh, um, Commissioner for Agriculture, Commissioner for Cohesion, Original Policy, Commissioner for Education, for Transport, so we know that connectivity is also a problem. When we talk about rural areas, we don't talk only about uh, um, when we say infrastructure, we, we don't think only sewage system and waterways. We think about digital connectivity, not only a classical infrastructure. Once they have broadband internet uh, all over Europe, the, you can work from your home, uh, as it is the case at the moment in Finland. You have more than 40% of jobs uh, which can be done uh, remotely from their homes. So we have to think about new innovative methods in order to to keep our citizens citizens live uh, in their uh, in their um, homes or their their regions their their villages in the country and this is uh, one of big big challenges in this uh, commission so we will try to do uh, um, much in this uh, area brain drain or if we, if you wish nowadays we we are we it's uh, politically correct to, tell, to call it uh, brain circulation because people go uh, uh, due to uh, more freedom, freedom of movement. You can move freely all over Europe without having working permits. People want to, uh, people move from different reasons, not only because of uh, living standard, but uh, because of education, because of gaining new skills. People move because they want to get married somewhere else. So there are different reasons for their movements. But so we cannot blame freedom of movement for this. We have to find solutions, and we are trying to do our best on behalf of the Commission. But once I have to uh, uh, highlight, we know that this is member states' competence, and we don't want to interfere. But still, we think that we can be of help for you. Uh, regarding your concerns, uh, that committee of the regions won't be included. It will be included, but you have to bear in mind treaty. In treaty, there are three co-legislators, council, commission, 
and Parliament. So I have to uh, I have to stress this. But of course, you are going to be our partner, as I said. But that, but bear in mind the treaty says that there are three co-legislators. But of course, uh, we want to be close to citizens. And if I may say a few words in my uh, mother tongue in Croatian to answer my dear Croatian colleagues. Ako mogu odgovoriti na hrvatsko mojim dragim kolegama iz Hrvatske, da, više od 50% građana je izašlo na ove izbore, što je bio rezultat u odnosu na prije 20 godina je zadnji put bio takav rezultat na evropskim izborima, što znači da su građani željeli nam nešto poručiti, željeli su reći da žele sudjelovati i to je razlog zašto je uopće pokrenuta ova konferencija. Pokrenuta je da bismo odgovorili na taj izazov i to je razlog zašto, zašto krećemo s ovom konferencijom u nadi da ćemo se uspjeti približiti građanima. Činjenica je da postoji praznina između nas, političara i građana, to je evident no, činjenica je da e, vrlo otvoreno ću reći da rastu, rastu e, ekstremističke ideje, da ih ne nazovem populističkim, bilo na krajnjoj ljevici, bilo na krajnjoj desnici i razlog je e, da se približimo građana, da mi budemo blizu, da vidimo koje su to problemi, koje su to brige, koji su to strahovi evropskih građana i zbog čega mi nismo u stanju odgovoriti na njihove zahtjeve. Dakle, ono što želimo ovom konferencijom čuti ih i odma adekvatno odgovoriti putem bilo zakonodavnih aktivnosti, bilo putem rezolucija, bilo, kao što sam malo prije rekla, možda čak i promjenom ugovora. Međutim, to je zadnja mjera koju bismo željeli upotrijebiti, budući da ima već puno, puno zakonodavnih akata koji nisu implementirani. To je ono o čemu vi sigurno Uh, to conclude, I want to thank all of you for this uh, very, very uh, good exchange of views. This is not our last time that we meet. I'm looking forward to your next plenary meeting and, uh, of course, I will be more precise. Then we will know more. We will have uh, um, guide, as I say, guidelines. We will have, we will be uh, better equipped, and I hope to start this very uh, uh, complex exercise on the Day of Europe. Symbolically enough, uh, 75 years after the Second World War, and uh, I think uh, we can start together. Not only Dubrovnik, but all over Europe, in different municipalities, different regions, different towns and uh, looking forward to your to your uh, contribution to this exercise thanks thank you once again thank you very much vice president thank you As we were saying, <laughs> the resolution is... Senhoras e senhores, vamos continuar com os nossos trabalhos. Passamos agora ao debate sobre a proposta de parecer de resolução do Comitê das Regiões sobre exatamente a Conferência do Futuro da Europa. O, há um conjunto de, de alterações, mas de qualquer das formas o debate está aberto. Se alguém quer intervir mais, para além de tudo aquilo que já foi dito, e redito. Não havendo intervenções, passamos às votações das propostas de alteração. 
Assim temos a primeira proposta de alteração. Vamos votá-la. Quem vota a favor desta proposta de alteração? Temos um problema com a tradução. We're going to vote amendment number one. Who votes for the amendment? Don't be shy. Thank you. Who votes against the amendment? Thank you. Abstention? It's rejected, amendment number one. A informação que tenho é que a segunda proposta de alteração foi retirada. Confirma. Muito bem. Passamos à alteração número 3. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? A proposta número 3 foi rejeitada. Proposta número 4. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. Quem se abstém? Proposta foi aprovada. Proposta número 5. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Vamos à votação eletrónica, por insistência do nosso secretário-geral. A votação está fechada. A proposta foi aceite. Passamos à proposta número 6. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? A proposta foi aprovada. Proposta número 7. Se for aprovada, cai a proposta número 8. Quem vota a favor da proposta número 7? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? A proposta foi aprovada, cai a proposta número 8. Passamos à proposta número 9. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? A proposta foi aprovada. Proposta número 10. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Muito obrigado. Abstenções. A proposta foi aprovada. Proposta número 11. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Proposta foi rejeitada. Proposta número 12. Tenho a indicação de que é um pedido de palavra da nossa colega Oné. Tem a palavra. Ja, Herr Vorsitzender, hierzu möchte ich sagen, dass wir als Fraktion, die wir den Änderungsantrag eingebracht haben, uns mit der Fraktion der Grünen, mit Herrn Frey, verständigt haben. Es gibt jetzt einen, einen Kompromiss, den ich gerne vortragen würde. Und zwar ist an den, soll an den Änderungstext noch ein Halbsatz angefügt werden. Ich lese den vor. Er beginnt, um die Ergebnisse der Konferenz angemessen umsetzen zu können, sollten auch Änderungen an den EU-Verträgen erfolgen können. Und äh, wir haben uns geeinigt, so dass dann ähm, der Änderungsantrag 13, sollte 12 angenommen werden, wegfallen könnte.
Muito bem. O que temos é uma proposta de um compromisso oral que, a ser aprovado, fará cair a proposta número 13. Passamos à votação da proposta 12 com a formulação dada pelo compromisso oral. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? A proposta foi aprovada. Cai a proposta número 3, passamos à proposta número 14. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta 14, aprovada. Proposta 15. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Proposta foi aprovada. Proposta 16. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta aprovada. Proposta 17. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta aprovada. Proposta 18. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta aprovada. Proposta 19. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Voto eletrónico. Podemos fechar a votação. Proposta foi aceita. Proposta número 20. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Proposta rejeitada. Proposta 20, uh, 21. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta rejeitada. Votamos agora a resolução final, o texto final, incluindo as propostas. Quem vota a favor do texto final? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? A resolução sobre a Conferência do Futuro da Europa foi aprovada. Muito obrigado. Por unanimidade. Unanimous vote. Vamos voltar um pouco atrás, ao ponto 19, ao nosso parecer sobre Brain Drain in the EU Addressing the Challenge at All Levels. Peço ao nosso relator, Emil Bock, para tomar o seu lugar, fazer a apresentação do seu relatório. Emil Bock tem a palavra. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Brand Drain. The brain drain is affecting many countries, regions, and local communities in the European Union. If it is not properly treated, the brain drain may affect the sustainability of the European project and may destroy the quality of life in both sending and receiving countries. Left un unaddressed, it will have 
long-term and permanent effects on the future of the European Union and is likely to become a strategic threat. The issue of brain drain in the European Union is complex, calling for a pragmatic policy response from the European Union, Member States, local and regional authorities. Local and regional authorities play a crucial role in addressing this issue, since local communities are the ones that are directly affected by the consequences of brain drain. Let's talk a little bit about the history of brain drain. This is a not a new issue, it's a very old issue. Migration of educated people is more than 2,000 years old. For example, 2,000 years ago, there was a brain drain from Athens to Alexandria in the context of policies promoted by Ptolemy I Soter. Later, the history of the first European universities is related to brain drain circulation and measures tried to stop the brain drain using even the death penalty. But no chance. The University of Arezzo, the University of Pisa, 1343, or Florence, 1349, were founded after migration from the University of Bologna. Also in the 1970s, the Bhagavati tax proposed a tax on the income earned by the skilled migrants in the destination country to the benefit of the source country. But of course, this measure also didn't work, even is still present in the political discourse. So today, what is the solution? There is no universal solution. But we can discuss now about brain drain in the context of brain gain and brain circulation, as Commissioner Suiza already mentioned. And we have another advantage in this very moment. Yes, the freedom of movement is a fundamental value of the EU. It's a religion. We cannot debate about the availability of the freedom of movement. But, always a but. What is the main point? We have to respect the freedom of movement, but everyone is free to move voluntarily inside the European Union, but no one should be forced to leave the country due to the poverty and other economic reasons. I think this is the key. How can we respect the freedom of movement, but no one should be forced due to the economical conditions to leave his own country, region, or, or uh, village, or uh, so on. So, if we do not properly trigger the brain drain, we have a potential threat to the future of the European project. You know that the countries below the EU28 average GDP per capita are mostly sending countries of skilled workers, like Romania, Bulgaria, Latvia, Lithuania, Croatia or Poland. On the other side, the countries above the EU28 average GDP per capita are the main destination countries of skilled EU movers, like Germany, UK, France, Italy, Netherlands, Spain, Austria, Belgium, Ireland, and so on. So, in this very context, we do have to take in consideration the positive and the negative impacts of the brain drain. Solutions. How can we tackle the brain drain? And I'll be very limited due to the time which I have it. First, multi-level governments and multi-level approach. European Union, state level, local and regional level. Second, political, commit political commitment for cohesion policy. It's, it's, it's a must to keep at least the same amount of money for political co for cohesion policy because this cohesion policy should remain a long-term investment for all regions and is the main instrument to keep Europe together and to deal with brain drain. Third, education, education, education. That's the main source, the main advantage to keep people home. And uh, you have a lot of examples of good uh, uh, results, best practices at local and regional uh, level from this point of view. In the end, we have to deal with brain drain, having in mind we have to fight against a continuous excessive brain drain. This is posing a, is posing a great danger to our countries, to our region. Excessive, continuous brain drain. and. Uh, you have to know the people who are leaving the country, their ultimate dream is to come back. And they have to take into account this. And we need to work together to deal with brain drain. In the end, Thank I would you. like to give special thanks to my uh, expert, Professor Hinza from Babish Boy University, one international expert in the field of brain drain. Thank you. Also to the Croatian presidency for establishing as a priority the Council of European Union, the Thank Education you, Committee, Emil. for all your support. Last but not least, the SEDEC and the staff. Committee. Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you.
Marcula, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. President, uh, dear Emil Pock, I just want to congratulate, but uh, to bring an additional idea as a follow-up, because this is really a crucial uh, topic, and your opinion is, is very well prepared. So, first thing that we definitely need is in the SEDEC, the follow-up activities of that, and one of those that we actually discussed last week with several of the CR members, actually in Spain, in Navarra, when there was organized a knowledge exchange platform which was about 12 different regions from more different parts of Europe were discussing about the social economy, but especially how to encourage the local collaboration mentality. And I challenge the local media as well so that we need and they need more investments on this, uh, let's say, uh, joint ecosystem towards more innovativeness and share the ideas and uh, good progress with the rest of Europe. And on that, so what we have this instrument, Knowledge Exchange Platform, I think our colleague Mikeli Ruho from Navarra, he will explain that later on, not today, but in the coming uh, weeks and months with the SEDEC, so how to move on with the Thank you, Marco. and so on, that we can get good progress on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have the floor, Mikel Amezaga. Sí, gracias. Y de hecho, ya tenía pensado intervenir antes de la intervención de Marco, con quien pudimos compartir la semana pasada un Knowledge Exchange Platform en Navarra sobre innovación social, que precisamente sí que versó sobre estos temas. Aquí solo dos aspectos por, por la limitación de tiempo. Uno, que es un tema que afecta no solo, obviamente, a, al mundo rural, sino que está afectando a aquellas ciudades que no son lo suficientemente grandes. Quiero decir, las, las ciudades grandes son las que están atrayendo lo, más del 80% del talento de toda Europa. Eso es una tendencia, digamos, que está bien preocupante y digna también de estudio. No afecta solo al mundo rural, existo, sino a ciudades medias que no alcanzan poblaciones de varios millones de personas. Esto es un dato contrastado. El segundo, obviamente, para poder ser una región inteligente, yo creo que eh, estaría, estaría más que interesante poder alinearnos con varias de las políticas que ya está desarrollando la Unión Europea, tanto a nivel de especialización inteligente como el futuro programa Digital Europe, que puede ser muy desarrollado especialmente en zonas no de ciudades grandes, zonas rurales y ciudades de medio tamaño. Gracias. Muchas gracias. No tengo registro de más pedidos de palabra. Passamos à votação das propostas de alteração. Vamos votar. Proposta de alteração número 1. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Aprovada. Proposta número 2. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem se abstém? Quem se abstém agora? A proposta foi aceita. Passamos à proposta número 3. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Votação eletrónica. Podemos fechar a votação. A proposta foi aceita. Passamos agora à votação do texto final global. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Aprovado por unanimidade. Muito obrigado, Emílio Bloch. Bloch. Obrigado. Passamos agora ao ponto da resolução sobre o programa de trabalho, ponto 21, programa de trabalho da Comissão Europeia. Está aberto o debate? Não há intervenções, nós temos que ser... Sr. McCarthy, tem a palavra. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Um, can I just say, kind of looking through the, the European Commission work programme uh, and the, the Vice Commissioner actually led us through some of the, uh, the five or six strands of the programme. Many, many of them actually overlap. Um, with the work of the Committee of the Regions and its networks, um, and especially its networks like Urbact, Interreg, um, Urban Innovative Action, um, the, the, the European Capitals kind of programme, and so on and so on. Um, so it's very, very um, important for us to weave our workload um, and present our workload and keep presenting it uh, to the European Commission um, so that we can actually be effective in our work kind of moving forward. Um, thank you. Muito obrigado. Tem a palavra a senhora Palauf. Sehr geehrter Herr Vorsitzender, herzlichen Dank für das Wort. Ich darf im Namen der österreichischen Delegation jetzt hier meine Stellungnahme abgeben. Wir haben diese Entschließungs diesen Entschließungsvortrag sehr intensiv studiert und diskutiert und auch mit großer Ernsthaftigkeit. Er enthält zahlreiche wesentliche und unterstützungswürdige Elemente. Und doch möchte ich äh, unsere Bedenken zum Ausdruck bringen, vor allem zum Punkt 3 dieses äh, Entschließungsvorschlages, wo es darum geht, eine, jetzt in diesem Zeitpunkt eine konkrete Zahl für die Beitragszahlungen zu fixieren und zu manifestieren. Wir wissen, äh, dass... Äh, die Verhandlungen zum mittelfristigen Finanzrahmen intensiv äh, voranschreiten, diese auch äh, hoffentlich zu einem baldigen Ende geführt werden und auch dort im, äh, schon Bewegungen ersichtlich you, sind. Wir ich schließe meinen äh, Satz und sage, wir können daher, weil wir es nicht für opportun halten, jetzt hier eine fixen Zahl zu nennen, diesem Vorschlag dann auch nicht zustimmen. Thank you. Danke. Non tenho mais pedidos de palavra. Podemos passar à votação das propostas de alteração. Temos cerca de 20 propostas de alteração. Começamos pela votação. Karl Heinz, you have the floor. Ja, ich möchte zum Finanzrahmen lediglich darauf hinweisen, dass wir unzählige Male schon in der Vergangenheit diese Forderung, die jetzt da äh, gestellt wird, wiederholt haben. Es wäre nicht logisch, wenn wir jetzt nicht in der Kontinuität unserer eigenen Stellungnahme, die übrigens auch sehr eng mit der des Europaparlaments zusammenhängt, äh, kohärent blieben. Und, und Mr. Jungmann, the floor. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, uh, I thought I was uh, also this one of the speakers, but uh, well, never mind. Um, the uh, ECR Group uh, welcomes uh, the European Commission uh, work programme. Uh, regarding uh, the resolution, um, we uh, agree with most of the points uh, that are made. And nevertheless, we tabled uh, amendments uh, uh, by which we aim to make sure that uh, EU regulations are more prop proportional and calling for the revision of the EU climate uh, targets without any impact assessment would not be wise. And the same goes for eliminating subsidies for fossil fuels. What about transition from coal to gas? If subsidies for gas are eliminated, uh, this will have a negative uh, impact on our air quality. And we believe that uh, the mechanism to monitor the application of rule of law in member states can only be compliant with the treaties if it was limited to assessing the application of the EU law. And finally, our members have different views over the desired size of the EU budget. And I hope that most of our amendments uh, will be accepted. And if so, we will be able to support the resolution in the final vote. Thank you so much. Muito obrigado. Não tenho mais, mais intervenções. Podemos passar à votação. Passamos então à votação da proposta de alteração número 1. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? A proposta foi rejeitada. A proposta de alteração número 2. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta de alteração foi rejeitada. Proposta de alteração número 3. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? 
Quem se abstém? Proposta de alteração foi aprovada. Proposta de alteração número 4. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta de alteração aprovada. Proposta de alteração número 5. Se for aprovada, prejudica a alteração número 6. Quem vota a favor da proposta de alteração número 5? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Voto eletrónico. Podemos fechar a votação. A proposta de alteração foi rejeitada. A proposta de alteração número 6. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? A proposta de alteração aprovada. A proposta número 7. Quem vota a favor? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta de alteração aprovada. Proposta de alteração número 8. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta de alteração aprovada. Proposta de alteração número 9. Senhor Royon, pede a palavra. Oui, Monsieur le Président, euh, nous proposons un rejet, euh, non pas sur le fond, mais parce que, en, en réalité, euh, le contenu de cet amendement est déjà intégré dans le point 65. Il aurait dû déjà être retiré. Donc, on, on incite à voter contre, mais. Monsieur Royon, ou qui prétend voter contre ou retirer la proposition Soit, e só ele o retire, só um voto contra, porque ele é muito Muito bem. Já dão, dão Sim, um... senhor. Muito obrigado. Então vamos votar. Quem vota a favor da proposta número 9? Muito obrigado. Quem vota contra? Voto eletrónico. A votação está fechada. A proposta foi aceita. Passamos à votação da proposta número 10. Se esta proposta for aprovada, cai a proposta número 11. Proposta número 10. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? A proposta foi aprovada. Proposta número 12. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? A proposta foi aprovada. Proposta número 13. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? A proposta foi aprovada. Proposta 14. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta foi rejeitada. Proposta número 15. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta foi aprovada. Proposta 16. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta foi aprovada. Proposta 17. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta aprovada. Proposta 18. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta aprovada. Proposta 19. 
Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta rejeitada. Proposta 20. Quem vota a favor? Quem se vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta foi rejeitada. Votamos agora o documento final. Quem vota a favor? Quem vota contra? Quem se abstém? Proposta aprovada. A maioria, por maioria. Por maioria. Passamos agora ao ponto de outros assuntos. Há outros assuntos? Não há outros assuntos? Ótimo. Data da próxima reunião. A próxima reunião está agendada para os dias 26, reunião plenária, para os dias 26 e 27 de março. E assim sendo, caras amigas e caros amigos, declaro encerrada esta sessão plenária do Comitê das Regiões. Muito obrigado.